<laughs> Yo, my fault, bro. I didn't have any blankets. Nah, it's f it's fine, dog. I'm sh I'm chilling. You sure, bro? Bro? Find me on Miami concrete Looking for somebody different Cause my daddy was a pimp My mama had an ex But I miss her anyway Yo, baby doll Two things Um, I'm a little sick right now So please excuse my voice Uh, second thing 20k What the fuck? Oh my god I can't believe it Oh, that shit hurt. So we going with non-copyrighted mariachi band music for today's video, I don't give a fuck. So this story starts like any typical story starts. You know, I'm sitting home, I'm playing some COD, when I get a call from my boy Steve. Bro, I just picked up a fresh packet of fucking Zazu Wazu. Oh, word, we gotta smoke that shit. That's what I'm saying. Bro, we should chill. You already know I got John in the cut. Okay. We're trying to do something, bro. Like, we're bored. All right, hear me out, hear me out. Yup. Uh, first, pause. What do you mean pause, bro? Boys sleepover? <laughs> Yeah, bet I'm on the way. So shortly after, John and Steve pull up to the crib. They come upstairs. We already know we about to get high as fuck. So we go to the designated smoking area, which is my bathroom. All right, we go in there. We shut the door, and we light up the fattest fucking bowl pack of all time. And I'm not fucking playing when I say this shit was fat. Steve put in two whole nugs into the shit, and we called it Double Nuggy. I'm not going to lie, y'all. This shit was hitting. Oh, my God. He's going in for the Double Nuggy. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my goodness. This shit had us fucking plastered. And you already know, after the double nuggy, you gotta partake in the munch. You no, not that, that munch. I'm talking about food. And I'm gonna be honest, we were all way too fucked up to drive, so... <laughs> you already know, I convinced my girl to drive us. And we set off to Dairy Queen. Oh, I wanna go to Dairy <laughs> Queen, where the chickens fly. Oh, he fucking that up. I wanna go to Dairy Queen where the, the vocals food okay. is and the shirts are busy. Yo, I'm the gonna fuck? get a blizzard. What flavor you gonna get? Yo, can y'all shut the fuck up? I'm trying to drive. So we roll up to the Dairy Queen, dare I say, faded, and we walk inside. You see, ordering food high is very difficult. I don't know what it is, but every time I try to order food high, I basically fucking forget English. Hey, welcome to Dairy Queen. What can I get for ya? <laughs> Bro, what's wrong with your voice? Excuse me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, can I get, um... Yep. A choc chocolate chip cookie dough blizzard. Chocolate chip cookie dough blizzard, yes. Mm-hmm. And, um... Anything else? Y'all got cheeseburgers? Oh, we do. You do? Yep. Shit, let me get, uh, a cheeseburger... But okay, listen. Um, I'm listening. Hold the lettuce. I don't. I don't fuck with the lettuce. I right, know lettuce. Or the tomatoes. No tomato. Or the onions. Like no I, onions. Like I'm talking like I, just a cheeseburger. Yeah. Like ketchup, mustard, cheese. Ketchup, mustard, cheese. Um, patty. Patty. And bun. And bun. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Twelve fourteen. So you know, I pay for my food. I thank God that that was finally fucking over. And I go and sit down at a table. You know, everyone else orders too. They all come and sit down, and we're waiting for our food. Now listen. All right. We are all extremely faded. And we were being a little fucking loud, I'm not gonna lie. People were giving us looks, and they weren't good looks. I'll just say that. So we took note of this, and when our food finally came over, we got it, and we went in the car, and we ate it on the way home. That shit was fucking bussin'. But, you know, we get back to the crib, all is good. We sit down, we're like, shit. Well, now what do we do? I guess we'll play some COD. So, you know, we play COD for a little bit, and then John and Steve have the great idea of, hey, how about we go smoke more, but let's just go do it outside because we'll get a little scenery change. And I'm on board. I'm fucking hyped. But as soon as I stand up from my chair, bro, oh my god, that Dairy Queen did not agree with me. My stomach was doing a fucking Mortal Kombat combo. But regardless, I'm like, yo, here are the keys to my car. You guys can go in the car. You can start rolling some shit. I'll be down in like two minutes. I just gotta... I just gotta shit, I'm not gonna cap. I'll spare y'all the details cause I know some of y'all are eating right now, but I'ma be honest bro, like, after I shit, I had to hop in the shower, like it was bad. But anyway, you know, glad that that's fucking over, I go downstairs and I go outside to my car, and I am greeted with three immaculate joints rolled by the master, Steve himself. Some might say we were about to go to Yodi Land. My friends, not only did we go to Yodi Land, we went beyond Yodi Land. Shit, we smoked these joints. I felt like I was in the fucking back rooms, bro. And we're trying to walk up the stairs back to the apartment, dude. We can't do it, dog. We are fucking stumbling. 
<laughs> Yo, it's like fucking <laughs> six we're more so steps, close, bro. bro. We're so close. I got it. I got it. No, I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll word? go first. Okay, word. Oh, he doing it. Oh, f- oh nah. <laughs> See, that, that one almost got me there. That one almost got After about 15 minutes of painstaking stair climbing, we finally make it back up to the apartment. And we have one of those deep conversations about life that you always have at the boys' sleepover. Bro, I mean, like, sometimes, I'm gonna be honest, bro, I just feel like I'm not enough. I know what you mean, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, like, there's so much more, yeah, I feel you, that I can do. Yeah, for but sure. I'm just... Like, time is a construct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Y'all are high as fuck. And you know, shit, we just kind of chilled out for a while until it was time that we were all fucking sleepy. Only issue is, I have a futon and an air mattress. And shit, I'm not doubling up, bro. Someone gotta sleep in a fucking chair or something. So Steve graciously volunteers to sleep in a fucking gaming chair. And we're like, you know what, bro? Fuck it. You should have seen this man's fucking setup, bro. He had the chair, like, down on the ground. He was, like, using it as, like, like lumbar support. And it was kind of cold, I'm not gonna lie. And my guy didn't really have a blanket. So he was using one of those fold-out metal chairs as a blanket. Like, this shit looked uncomfortable as fuck. But hey, Steve's a trooper, bro wasn't complaining, so all was good. And we passed the fuck out. But wait, there's more. We awake at 6 a.m. Yo, boys. Sean, what the fuck? Yo, I gotta work in an hour, bro. Someone trying to drive me? What? And fuck, man, it's not like he could miss work, bro. After all, he is a dairy manager at one of the most prestigious grocery stores of all time. Shit, man, I mean, you gotta do the cheese repack by any means necessary, am I right? So, you know, Steve drove John to work, I tagged along for the ride, he dropped me off back at home, and we went our separate ways. Shit, we were still fucked up from the night before, bro. We got like two hours of sleep. It was hell. I went back upstairs, laid down, Pass the fuck out. Once again, thank you for 20k. Uh, pretty fucking awesome. Also, um, my birthday's tomorrow, and uh, for a little birthday gift, I was hoping that y'all could get me to a thousand followers on Instagram. Here's my Instagram right here. Um, follow it, uh, pretty please. And also, a uh, big thank you to the fucking members. We got Leo Payton, Calamari, Cooper Leach, 50k Dawn. XX Siphon XX, that's like a gamer tag. Nemo and Zaretso, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Every fucking penny helps because I'm broke. Good night, y'all. Love you. Stay safe. Bye bye. And we can play Fall Guys, and then we can we can play Call of Duty, and then after how that, long has he been like this? About Fall forty-five guys, minutes. And then maybe oh, Minecraft, wow. and then we can play Call of Duty. I don't wanna know if you're playing me. Keep it on the low Cause my heart can't take it anymore If you're creeping Please don't let it show. So, for today's video, we are using copyright free mariachi band music again because last time that seemed like a big hit. So, today's story takes place a couple months ago during the Modern Warfare 2 beta. This is important, remember it. I get a call from my boy Steve. I mean, fuck, you know how this goes by now. Bro basically asked me, yo, you should come over to the garage. We got booth, let's smoke it. And I'm like, for show, you, you know, ah ha ha. And because this was during the Modern Warfare 2 beta, I was actually the only one that pre-ordered the game on the PlayStation 5. I'm like that, I'm him. So, um, I had to bring the PS5. So, you know, I packed that shit up, I got it in a little duffel bag, and I exit the homestead. Amidst all the chaos, I forget my fucking keys, so I'm like, shit. Now, not only am I locked out of my house, I'm locked out of my car. So, what the fuck am I gonna do? So, I call up John. Oh, what's good, Split? Yo, I'm locked out of my crib and my car. Yeah? I'm gonna walk to your crib and then we go to Steve's. I bet. So, like a true gunslinger, I pick up the fucking 20-pound duffel bag with the PS5 and I start hoofing it. I was not prepared for the journey ahead of me. See, it was about a 15-minute walk to John's crib. But then after that, we didn't even know how the fuck we were gonna get to Steve's. It was like a 45-minute walk to Steve's. I was wearing a hoodie with no shirt under it because that's how I rock them. And I had some shitty Adidas joggers, bro. It was cold as fuck out. But I did have one saving grace. The Benjamin. <laughs> So I take this absolute stinky blinky off the Benjamin, you know what I mean? And I continue to embark on my fucking journey. Now, being cold and sweating while walking sucks, but being cold, sweating, walking with a PS5 on your back and high as fuck, 
don't do it. Terrible experience. But hey, God must have heard me that day because I get to John's house and who's there? Our boy Mark. What's good, Mark? How you been, Split? Oh, uh, no, nah, I've been chilling. I've been chilling. Yeah? Uh, as you can see, I'm in a very rough state. I can tell. Do you mind driving me and John to Steve's? Oh, for sure. So, we make it to Steve's unscathed and the goddamn party has already started. I'm gonna give y'all a head count real quick. It is me, Steve, John, Mark, Carl, and let's not forget the life of the party, Noel. Now, if you're not updated with the lore on Noel, I recommend you go check out Too High at the Movies and Faded in the Garage. Those will uh, tell you all you need to know about the boy. But short little summary, Noel, very special boy, love him with all my heart. But uh, unfortunately, he has to go to the bathroom every five minutes, and he is afraid of drugs, which is okay. I'm not hate. So, you know, we walk in, I set up the PS5 immediately, it's the Modern Warfare 2 beta, you can't fucking miss this. I hand the controller to Noel, he's like our fucking son. Bro's just sitting there, and we proceed to get high as fuck. <laughs> Triple kill! Oh. oh, that was strong. Fuck! But, time went on, uh, no one else really got to play the beta except Noel, he was kinda hogging it, I'm not gonna lie. But, uh... Mark and Carl decided to dip, which was respectable, but I was stuck at this kid's house till like 11 p.m. Because let's not forget, I'm locked out of my house and the only other person with a key is my girlfriend, and she wasn't even in the fucking state at the time, so we had to think of some shit to do. Boys, what are we gonna do? We could smoke more? Uh, that's not a bad idea. That's what I'm saying. Boys. I got a couple pre-rolls. Shit just got real. Y'all, we light these pre-rolls up and we are rocketed into another fucking dimension. You got the shit go split? Go split. Oh! Oh, 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 oh shit. <laughs> we were, as the British call it, <clears throat> toasted. Like, we were so high, we were at the point where we were, like, unlocking new powers. Hey, John. Uh, what, what, what's up? What's up? What, what's you doing there, bud? I'm controlling my left eye independently from my, Oh, let me try. Let me try. My right eye. Oh, you got it. But the rest of the night went on. Noel continued to play the Modern Warfare 2 beta on my PlayStation 5, I might add. Um, he ended up leaving when we smoked for a third time because, like, you know... He, he doesn't like weed. But you know, 11 p.m. rolls around. My girl's there to save the day. She scoops me and John up, dropped John off at the crib, took a stinky blinky in the car with him because, you know, that's the send off. That's what you gotta do with the boys. And you know, I got home and passed the fuck out. Wait! Make sure you hit the bell next to the subscribe button because I am going live almost every other day this week. Um, I'm playing Red Dead Redemption and probably some other fucking games. It's pretty fun. Um, you guys are showing mad love to the stream, so thank you again. Also, thank you for 24,000 subscribers. It's pretty fucking crazy uh 25k next 100k 2023 okay now i am going to sing the names of the members there's a lot of them this time so um yeah here we go okay we got hi focus and chris and sleepy cool my pluto dairy <laughs> same as p and rot and hunter and quake Unscripted C, Belugo and Tarif, and Rogan Ballard and ZZZ, Isaiah Finn, Brown Frat Rat, Hashtag 9498, JS Crusher, God, Leo Payton, Calamari, Cooper Leach, 50k, Don XX, 7XX, and Nemo, thank you, Nemo, thank you, all the members. This is Holy a long outro, I don't care. I love you guys, bye. Hey, bro, I think that's a car. What are you talking about, bro? There's no car. Yeah, yeah, nah, dude, that's. That car is coming, bro. Yeah. Oh, yo! Oh, you good? Nah, we good, we good. I've been drinking and driving and surviving. Came with sorrow and buried me alive. In it. Wear your best dress, girl, cause you're gonna die in it. Bet you regret the day that you lied in. This story takes place during the absolute fiend chapters. These are the days that we would do anything for nicotine. Anything? Bro, no! Ugh. Anyways, it was summer vacation, and me and my boy, we're gonna call him Stark, we were chilling at his crib. And you know, we were chilling on the couch, watching some TV, when the worst thing ever happened. Yo, bro, can I rip your air bar? Oh yeah, I got you, bro, here you go. Oh, I appreciate it. Oh, bro, oh my god. No, it, bl it blinked. No. Fuck! 
No! I mean, shit, we've all been there. When you're young and you have a crippling fucking nicotine addiction, the only way you can get nicotine is through a Nick plug. Yeah, some pretty badass people. So, you know, we hit up the local Nick plug, Craig Lee, and personally, I wouldn't step within 10 feet of this motherfucker. You know he keep that motherfucking fang on. I'm just fucking with you. Craig Lee was a bitch. I can't tell you the amount of times that we straight up just robbed this kid. He didn't even have the balls to do anything about it, so usually we just get away with free Nick. But unfortunately, on this day, Craig Lee wasn't around, so we had to go to Plan B, which was Stark's older brother, Jark. Jark. Jark was a fucking G. Jark would supply us with the goddamn jewel pods. But unfortunately, Jark was out of the fucking state, so we were kind of fucked. So we had to resort to Plan C. You never want to resort to Plan C. Plan C is fucking terrible. Plan C was basically me saying, Hey, uh, I think I left some vape juice at my dad's house, uh, across the city, we could walk there and maybe find it if it's still there. And even if we did do that, all we had to put the vape juice in was a soaring air and the fucking pod was burned, bro. Y'all got it easy now. You think when dispos burn, they're bad? Nah, dude, have you ever burnt a Soren AirPod? That shit tastes like a campfire. But hey, we're running out of options, so we decided to go with Plan C. We start off on our absolute fucking adventure across the city. In hopes, in fucking hopes that I left, like, maybe a little sliver of vape juice. Luckily, we found a little bit of weed in Stark's basement and a backwood, so, you know, we rolled up the shittiest fucking blunt of all time. I mean, this shit was terrible, bro. But at the time, we were freshmen in high school, and we got high as fuck. We start trooping. Cherry on top? It's like fucking 90 degrees outside and it's humid as shit, bro. We are sweating balls. And we're like, damn, we might have to low-key stop like inside a fucking gas station or something and get some bev. Hello, welcome. Uh, yeah. Jim? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to hang up on you real quick. I got some, uh, sweaty high kids walking in. Can I help you gentlemen find anything? Do uh, you have Powerade or Gatorade or something along those lines, man? Yeah, right in that cooler over there. Ah, thank you, brother man. So the Bev is secured, and we continue on our journey. Now, my high ass thought it would be a good idea to take a little shortcut. So me and Stark cut through the woods. You know, we're walking through the woods, it's all fine, until we hit the dreaded fucking briar bush. If y'all don't know what the briar bush is, it's basically a... a Fuck, it's a bush, and it has a bunch of thorns sticking out of it. And I'm wearing some loose-ass basketball shorts. I cut through that shit, it rips my fucking shorts, and it cuts the fuck out of my thighs. So if you thought we were looking suspicious before, think again. We are sweating high as fuck, dripping fucking Gatorade, my shorts are ripped, and I'm fucking- my legs are just bleeding. But we're close. There's only one more main road that we have to cross to get to my dad's house. Hopefully he's not home. Hopefully I have some fucking vape juice there. Quite honestly, this video is basically a PSA to not fucking smoke nicotine. Look at 14 year old me. Look at him. Bleeding. Sad. High. And going through withdrawals. Stark wasn't faring any better. He was basically in the same fucking state I was in. And we try to cross this fucking road and it goes terribly. Yo, look left. Look right. Then look left again. All right, bro, we're good, we're good. Run! Our entire lives flashed before our eyes. We actually almost fucking died. If we took one extra step, our organs would be in a fucking pothole. But we make it across the street. Our journey is almost complete. Damn, that right. We get up to my dad's house, and luckily, nobody's home. And I'm searching, man. I'm searching through the cupboards. I'm searching through the fucking drawers. You find anything yet? Nah, not yet. All right, I'll keep looking. Oh my god! I found it! You found it? Salt Nick! 50! Let's go! The mission was a goddamn success, and we fill up this three-month-old burnt Soren AirPod, and we take a hit. <sighs> oh, what's that? Is it peace? Bliss? Oh, it's nausea! This shit was fucking disgusting! Without a doubt, hands down, the worst fucking thing I have ever hit in my entire life to this fucking day. Moral of the story, um... Don't develop a nicotine addiction, and if you do develop a nicotine addiction, don't, don't walk across the city and almost die for a burnt Soren AirPod and some shitty salt nick, I guess. I don't know. Alright, bye. 
First things first, let me get that introduction We on a long road of self-destruction You so in love, you ain't gon' tell me nothing Let me get this clear, cause I had no idea Feel like I did too much, feel like I did too much But it's getting out of here, all of Feel like I did too much, feel like I did too much You good, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Day and night. The <laughs> starter seems to freeze mine tonight. He's all alone, so... Getting high for the first time is always a wild experience. But you know what's more wild than getting high for the first time? Getting high for the first time in school. This story brings me back to the ultra turbo virgin days. Middle school, what the fuck? So I was in sixth grade at the time of this, and you know, a couple of my friends have tried weed maybe once or twice. You know, we're not really smoking big fucking doinks because we're like 12 years old. But I haven't tried weed at all at this point. I mean, I'm mega weed virgin. And, you know, I'm kind of feeling left out. And I don't know about y'all, but during my middle school years, there was always this little voice in the back of my head saying, you gotta fit in, yeah. man. You gotta, oh, like, yeah. fucking yeah, like, yeah, for do sure. what they're doing. So one morning, I'm walking to school with my boy. Let's just call him Cedric. And as we're walking, you know, we're shooting the shit like usual, talking about video games and shit. I mean, it's sixth grade. What else are you gonna fucking talk about? But Cedric whips out this absolute banger of a sentence. Dog. I was so high last night, I thought I was in GTA. And that shit just activated all the neurons in my brain. And I'm instantly replying with, Bro. Bro, I gotta smoke. Like, I gotta try it out. I wanna be in GTA. This is gonna be sick. And he goes, you sure? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, like, not not right now, but, like, I wanna, uh, yeah, I wanna try it. How about second period? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we get to school, you know, I finish up my first class, and the whole time I'm in this class, I'm fucking shaking in my boots. I'm like, oh, fuck, I actually gotta do this shit. Fuck, I'm not ready for this. Fuck, 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 I'm just- Bro, stop being a pussy. Who are you? I'm your wee guardian angel, man. All you gotta do is smoke some of that grass in class and you're gonna have the best time ever, man. I'm telling you. So I stand up with the absolute bravery of a hundred Spartan soldiers and I go to my next class. I walk in the door and I see this fucking kid, Cedric, bro. And I'm like, my fucking dude. I sit down next to him. He pulls out the dab pen and proceeds to lay out the most intricate game plan. At 0900, you are to go to the A lunch bathroom. You are to stay put until my arrival. When I arrive, we are to go into the handicap store. Here is where I will pull out the good stuff. After this ordeal, you are to make nothing of it and return back to the classroom. I will be following short behind with snacks I have stolen from the lunchroom. Bravo 6, do you copy? Bravo 6... Bro, you already hit that shit? No. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but something just flipped in me. I mean, as soon as he pulled this shit out, I went under the desk and took a quick fucking sip. And as soon as I surfaced, I just felt this wave of just, what the fuck is this shit? I'm fucking tweaking. I'm, I'm a little fucking, I'm a little fucking tweak, tweaker geeker. And although I'm a tweaker geeker, I'm not a fucking bitch. I'm not gonna let this shit control me. So I sit back, think nothing of it, and just continue on with the class. Then about 20 minutes later, it fucking hits me. The dry mouth. <laughs> And in middle school, I was one of those kids that walked around with a big-ass thermos full of water. But this day, just out of sheer fucking luck, it happened to be bone dry. I start fucking fiending for water. I'm like, yo, Cedric. Bro. You got water? Nah, bro, I'm sorry. I didn't bring any today. So I'm sitting there fucking fried out of my mind for the first time in class. No fucking water. And I knew if I didn't get any soon, disaster was coming. So with all of the strength in my body, I raised my hand. Split, honey, do you have a question? You go to the bathroom, please. Okay, just hurry back. So I get up, and I start fucking speed walking. And I make it to the water bubbler. I'm just gonna say my middle school wasn't the best because we only had two functioning water bubblers. 
The first one was inside the cafeteria, and the second one was on the opposite side of the school, right outside the art rooms. So naturally, I picked the one in the cafeteria because that was the closest to my class. And I get there, and there is a fucking line and a half for this shit. And I'm just trying to weigh out my options. It's either wait in this line really high, or go to the other side of the school and hope that there's no line at that one. And for whatever reason, I thought the second option would be the better one. So I walk my ass across the entire school just to get to the water bubbler. And I'm almost there. I mean, I am so close, but I get hit with a sudden fucking wave of nausea. And I don't know if it was the weed, the fact that I was dehydrated, or the fact that I had three Pop-Tarts this morning, but I felt like I was gonna throw my brains up. And my fucking guardian weed angel isn't even helping at all, because he's just like, Bro, what? You're gonna puke. No, I'm not. You're gonna do it. You're, you're nauseous. No. And without thinking, I sprint to the bathroom, go inside the stall, and eject all three of my Pop-Tarts. But I gotta push on. I clean myself up, and I get back to class. And Cedric's like, Bro, are you good? I, I, th I threw, uh, I, th I threw, I throw up. Oh shit, man, that's how you know it's some good shit. And I just look back at him with this fucking war-torn expression. You have no idea what I just went through. But anyway, the bell rings, and my next period is lunch. And I don't even fucking go to lunch. I was just feeling so shitty. I went to the library, texted my mom to come pick me up. And these library chairs were comfy. They were too fucking comfy because I passed the fuck out. And I wake up to the librarian tapping me on the shoulder. What the Are fuck? You split? Yeah, I'm split. Your mom's dismissing you. You can go to the front office. And I get to the front office and my mom's just staring at me. And you know what I mean when I say she was giving me the look. She definitely knew I was fucked up. And I knew I myself was fucked because she said nothing to me the entire ride home. But we pull into the driveway, she puts the car in park, and then looks at me and fucking goes off. I know you fucking did what? something. Don't ever fucking do that shit again. Huh, I swear to God, I don't know what you're have to come talking about. Do. But I eventually muster the strength to bring my high ass upstairs. I get to my room and I pass the fuck out. Baby girl, you know what I want. Let me do it to you. Do you like? Let me do you like Bro, you see this shit is crazy. Boom boop boom 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 So I don't know about y'all, but personally, I've never really celebrated Fourth of July. I mean like yeah as a kid I would run around with like sparklers and shit. But if I'm being honest, at that age I really didn't give a fuck about Fourth of July. I'd much rather just be home sitting in my room just playing some fucking xbox yet yeah, there i was full-blown adult fourth of july doing the exact same thing i was doing 10 years ago as i came to this realization i decided hey i'm gonna call around i'm gonna see what's going on it's fourth of july i mean i'm not doing anything anyway right so eventually my boy we'll call him steve picks up right and steve's all like bro you gotta come down to the fireworks and and smoke with us Bro, like, it's, it's lit. So I'm just like, fuck it, you know what? Let's do it. So me and my girl get ready, and we're about to go to the fireworks when she says, Hey, why don't we just walk there? So, I want you guys to keep in mind that I just moved into this apartment a month prior, and I'm the kind of guy that gets into the car just to go to a store that's within spitting distance. But anyway, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. You know what? It's 4th of July. Let's just walk down there. I mean, it's only like a 15-minute walk. So I proceed to blinker my dab pen and get on my way. So we're about five minutes into this walk now, and, you know, I'm starting to feel it. It's kicking in a little bit. But what really starts tripping me out is all the music and all the people. Like, as soon as we got to downtown, it was just fucking jam-packed. Like, I'm talking people running in the street. Cars almost hitting each other. But regardless, I'm a fucking star athlete, right? So me and my girl start racing each other through downtown to get to the fireworks. Now, keep in mind, I'm pretty fucking high already, all right? Like, I don't have the biggest tolerance, so anything over a three-second hit will pretty much knock me out. But somehow, I managed to keep it together, and we finally meet up with my boy Steve. Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it's, it's good. All right, man. Let me just let me just show you like okay. where we're all sitting and whatnot. Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds cool. 
So we all sit down in this big circle on the grass, surrounded by, like, a sea of people. Like, I'm, like... This shit looked like rolling fucking loud, bro. And I quickly pick up on the fact that nobody in this circle is sober whatsoever. So naturally, I engage my fiend instincts. And within 30 to 45 seconds, I have already located the precise locations of three dab pens. And I don't know what was in the air that night, but for some reason, I was just eating those hits. I'm talking blinker, 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 no cough, nothing. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, how come I'm, I'm not really feeling this right now? Maybe I should stand up. And stand up, I did. This shit felt like fucking lead poisoning. But against all odds, I kept it together. So after standing up for an extremely awkward 45 seconds, everyone else proceeded to stand up. And it was starting to get dark, so the main consensus amongst the group was, hey, I mean, fireworks should be starting soon, right? So collectively as one high consciousness, we all got up and started to look for a spot where we could see the fireworks. So as the whole group is walking, me and Steve kind of veer off a little bit. And I just got a glimpse of this man's face. Bro, Steve was fucking shattered. And we kind of looked at each other with that same face like, oh fuck. Anyways, we end up catching back up to the group just as the fireworks are starting. And we're about three minutes into the show when my boy, let's call him John, says, Bro, do you see those rocks over there? Yeah. Let's fucking climb them. The funny thing about this statement was, John, in fact, did not climb the rocks and decided to stay back, while me, my girl, and Steve actually went to go climb the rocks. So, we're starting to walk up these rocks, and you know, it's a little shaky. I mean, it's pretty fucking dark out right now. And me and Steve are completely plastered. But somehow, we managed to get up a couple levels of these rocks, right? This is when I made a grave mistake. I took my left foot, and I planted it on a rock in front of me, and I tried to kind of, you know, use that rock without my hands, just like as a balance, right? This shit gives way. I eat absolute shit on these rocks, right? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna stand up, shake it off, fuck it. You know, like, it hurt a little bit, but I'll be fine. So as soon as I stand up, I take another step, but before my foot touches the ground, a firework erupts above me, fucking flashbanging me, and I eat shit once again. Keep in mind, the whole time I am falling, unbeknownst to me, Steve is also falling. The only person with good enough balance to manage this shit right now was my girlfriend. And, I mean, I don't blame her for fucking laughing, because this is probably hilarious. But anyway, the fireworks end up stopping, and here we are stranded on these rocks, right? The little light that we had from the fireworks is gone now. It is just pitch black. So we're like, hey, we're going home. And I could tell Steve really wasn't feeling it right now. So me and my girl were like, hey, you can just come over to my place, you know, sober up a bit, and then we'll bring you home. So we all agreed that'd be a good idea, and we started walking back. This walk was quite possibly the longest adventure I've ever been on in my life. It was realistically only 15 minutes. But we were so high that everything was tripping us out. I mean, we had to walk through a crowd of people just to get onto the sidewalk. So first of all, that was fucking insane. I felt like I was in Assassin's Creed. After that, it's just the three of us walking home pitch black through some random neighborhoods, which is fucking scary when you're high. But eventually we get to my street and then we realized, oh, fuck, we got to cross the street. Oh, this is easy. All right, so I think... I'm, I'm gonna Wait, go. Wait, no, 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 no. So, after that near-death experience, we were just like, fuck it. And we all ran across the street and went upstairs. So we get upstairs and we're like, hey, we made it. All right, that's all that matters. We had no idea what was about to happen. I don't know what it was, but just from running across the street, me and Steve were struggling to breathe. We're sitting on my floor fucking dying. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. You boys want some water? <laughs> yes, please. So we get this water, and we drink it, you know, as per usual. And we're starting to feel a little bit better. At least I thought. Because I looked over at Steve, and this man was on another planet. And he looks me dead in the eye and goes, Bro, I'm nauseous. I need to go to your porch. And we were just about to bring him home anyway, so, you know, it all kind of worked out. So anyway, we get down to my porch, Steve looks at me, gives me the salute, 
turns around and, you know, does his thing. Oh, buddy. So after that, you know, we drove him home, wished him good luck, all that. And I went back home and I fucking passed out. Boom, boop, boom, boom, boom. Damn, bro. Where the fuck is my weed? I could have sworn I just put it on the table. I ate it. What? I what? ate that shit, bro. What do you mean? You left the weed on the table, and I ate that shit. And now I'm fucking fried. That That's not that's not okay. Give me some treats, bitch. Huh? Listen. <coughs> See, you got ritualistic. Depends in my soul of addiction for now, cause I'm falling apart. So this story takes place last year. You see, I got my cat last year. She's great. I love her. But when she was a kitten, she was a cereal weed eater. I mean, I'd break down the weed, put it on the tray, I'd look away for maybe 20 seconds, and that shit would be gone. But anyway, one night, you know, I was chilling in my room, I was playing some Call of Duty. And I was pretty bored, so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna roll up some fucking shit, you know what I mean? So I break out the fucking Zaza, right? And I put it on the tray and I start breaking it down. And I'm like, shit, I really gotta go to the bathroom right now. So I get up, you know, I go take a piss, I come back. Where the fuck's the weed? At first, I start getting paranoid, like, is there a fucking weed-stealing ghost in this crib? But then I hear a little... And I'm like, what the fuck? And I look under the table, and my cat is sitting there, eating the fucking weed! And I'm like, oh, hell nah! So I pick her up, you know, and I put her on the bed. And I look at the weed, and this bitch almost ate the whole nug. Keep in mind, this is a little fucking kitten. She weighs like two pounds, and I'm kind of panicking. But, you know, for the time being, she seems fine. So I'm just like, you know what? Let's just ride it out. We'll see what happens. So, you know, I pick up the remaining weed. I still smoked it, bro. I still smoked that shit. So I'm sitting on my bed, and I'm playing some cod, and I'm fucking fried. And it's been about 45 minutes since my cat ate the weed. And I look over at this little fucking thing, and it's fucking knocked out. This shit is laying down on the TV remote slumped. Maybe you're thinking, hey, this is normal kitten behavior. Not for my cat. This thing is a fucking psychopath. When she was a kitten, she would just constantly run. Like, she would just run around and fucking, like, just be hyper as shit all the time. So to see her fucking knocked out like this was definitely out of the ordinary. So I'm like, yo, I'ma just wake her up. Maybe it's rude. I don't know, but I'ma wake her up and see what happens. So I poke her, you know, she does not wake up. So I'm like, what the fuck? Alright, so I pick her up, still asleep, literally asleep in my hand. I'm like, what the fuck, is this thing dead? Just about when I lost all hope, she wakes up and she is baked. I'm not gonna lie, y'all, this shit was funny as fuck. I was fried with my cat. Like, she was trying to walk and she was, like, stumbling and shit. And eventually she just passed out on the floor. And I was like, oh, nah, I gotta put it in her bed because this is kind of fucked up. So, you know, I pick her up, I put her in her little bed, and she's knocked, like, for... Dude, it had to be, like, fucking 12 hours. Like, she woke up the next afternoon. I know this can't be good for cats, so I'm not telling y'all to go replicate it. Please do not feed your cat weed, but I'm not gonna lie. That shit was funny as fuck. God damn it, I'm the first YouTuber to get high with their fucking cat. Anyways, moral of the story, don't let your cat eat your fucking weed. First of all, you lose weed, and second of all, it's bad for the cat. But wait! Wait, the video's not over yet. We're almost gonna hit 17k. We might even fucking hit 17k tonight. This is insane. Guys, holy fuck, thank you so much for the support recently. It's absolutely changing my life. You guys are the best. Uh, I live stream almost every other night here on YouTube, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't fucking miss that shit. I love you guys so much. You're the best. Okay, that's it. Bye, love you. I don't practice Santeria. I don't got no crystal ball. I had a million dollars and I, I spend it all. Oh, this is crazy. Do you hear me calling? Do you hear me? I've only been to two concerts in my life, and I fucking love them. There's just something about concerts that make them feel like a completely separate reality. Maybe it's the rush of being around thousands of people that are extremely hyped, or maybe it's the fact that you're all standing under a big fucking hotbox dome. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you go to a concert sober, there is a 0.01% chance you will leave that concert sober. I remember my first concert, it was a Juice World concert, and I'm gonna say... 
2017, 2018? I think I, think I, could, I still got the ticket for that. I was way off. Holy fuck. 2019. Anyway, me and my cousin will roll up to this Juice World concert. I'm already like, you know, I'm good. I'm chilling. I'm, 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 I'm a little happy guy. And we get past the dreaded concert line, which ended up feeling like an hour and a half because I was high. But anyway, we get into the stadium and I'm like, damn. I'm about to cop some merch. So I end up blowing a fucking bag. I blew like $120 on Juice World merch. But I'm feeling like I'm about to prepare the most fire fit of all time. So I'm like, yo, I'm gonna run to the bathroom. I'm gonna put the fit on and then I'll be right back. So as I'm in the bathroom, you know, I'm going through my pockets and I'm like, oh, I left my dad pen in these pants. Huh, how silly of me. Might as well hit it. So, you know, I do the usual. <laughs> <sighs> and I get back to my cousin, and we go into the stadium. And you know, all's going good. The openers come out, which actually happen to be Polo G and Little TJ. And you know, I'm vibing. I'm vibing. We pop out we at your party, <laughs> party. with the gang. Yeah. It's gonna be a robbery. <laughs> Bitch. So tuck your chain. And then the lights dimmed. There is no feeling in the world quite like that. As soon as the lights go out. The entire stadium gets fucking hyped. And when this man Juice World came out, I couldn't contain it. How y'all doing tonight? Let's fucking go! And bro proceeded to serenade everyone in that building. I was so high, I could have sworn that this man was God. And just when I thought it couldn't get any better, this motherfucker ski mask the slump god comes out. <laughs> It was an absolutely insane experience. But, sadly, all good things must come to an end. Now we gotta get the fuck home. The one thing I don't like about concerts is when it's time to leave. There is just so many people that it almost always results in extreme chaos. So I'm geeked and I'm following my cousin through these crowds of people. Which, might I add, are all most likely fucking high. So where does that leave us? In a sea of absolute NPC hell. There's people pushing you. There's people groping you. There's people running. There's people on the fucking floor. And before I even think about it, someone snatches my fucking bag of merch, which also included my previous pants. And these previous pants also included my dad pen. So not only did I lose almost all the merch I bought that day, I also lost my dad pen. So I, w I was fucking pissed. But you know, what are you gonna do about it? It's not like I'm gonna fucking find the guy. But you know, we eventually made it home, I go up to my room, and I pass the fuck out. Another thing they don't really tell you about concerts is the post-concert depression. This shit had me feeling like Eeyore for the next 72 hours. But anyway, that's all I got for you fellas today, you little, you little stoners. And uh, thank you for 6k? Um, I don't, I don't know why you keep subscribing, but thank you. Also, uh, I made a Discord, I'm gonna put the link in the description. And, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I really don't know how to use Discord, so if any of you have any knowledge with that, uh, shoot me a DM over on my Twitter, and yeah, we can, we can get it cracking. What, what did, what did Comathazine say? Hold on. <clears throat> we can get it cracking. Bitch, I live for action. I came in with the AK-47, <laughs> fully automatic. Boom, bitch. I've been living fast, fast, boom. fast, fast. Boom. Ain't no really bad, boom. bad, bad. Boom. Boom. Oh my god. Time really moves boom. fast, boom. fast, fast, so fast. High. Hurry boom. up and get in your bag, 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 bag. Yo, this class sucks. Fuck this class for real, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. Oh, oh fuck. Who's in there? Nobody. When the van's outside, little bitch, you better be ready. When the guns outside, little bitch, you better be ready. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I didn't really go to high school much. I mean, I'd be absent almost every other day. Which, you know, is kind of fair. High school fucking sucks. So you best believe if I was going to school, I was going to school faded. And my friends were no different. They were doing the same shit. But, you know, one morning, I go into school and I go to my first period. And I have math first period. And, you know, math kind of sucked, but uh, my friend Rennie was in the class. So, you know, we kind of just talked the whole time. So, you know, I sit down in class and I'm waiting for Rennie to show up. Rennie ends up arriving about, like, 20 minutes into the period. And it's clear to me that bro is definitely not sober. My guy shuffles into the class and slumps down the seat next to me. Yo, bro, you good? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, huh? I'm just good. Yo, are, are you good? Yeah, bro, I'm off two bars. 
Oh, nah. My guy was off the Zanzen class. First period. But bro looks at me and he's like, Yo, bruh. What's good? I got my pen. Oh, where? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give it to you. Oh, And blessed. you can uh, go to the bathroom and, and get faded, bro. That sounds like a plan. So in my high school, there were four bathrooms. There were three regular bathrooms, and then there was a handicap bathroom downstairs. And I'm like, if I'm gonna be ripping this pen, I'm gonna be ripping this shit. So I'm not gonna go to the regular bathroom, because I'd just be asking to get caught. So I raised my hand. Split, do you have a question? Yeah, um, I gotta go to the bathroom... Please. So my teacher hits me up with the stinkiest hall pass and I make my way to the bathroom. And I get to the handicap bathroom and I'm hype. I'm like, yo, I'm about to hit this pen. I'm about to get fucking faded. So, you know, I open the door, I go in the bathroom and I shut it. You know, and I sit down on the toilet with my clothes on, obviously. I'm not about to take a shit. And I rip the pen. And I start coughing like a motherfucker, but you know, I just keep ripping it because like, this is my one opportunity, I gotta get as high as possible, so hopefully it'll last me at least halfway through the day. So I take another rip, and then I hear it. <coughs> <coughs> oh no! If you've ever smoked in school, you know exactly how much trauma that sound brings. The fucking Dean was standing right outside the handicapped bathroom, probably waiting to bop me. So my brain goes into absolute turbo overdrive and I come up with the biggest plan ever. Alright, so when I get outside, I know that he's gonna search me. So he's gonna look in my pocket, so I'm gonna take the pen and I'm gonna put it in my wallet. And I'm gonna put the wallet in my lower left pocket, so if he looks in my wallet, Oh fuck no, because then if he looks in my wallet, he'll see the pen, so I gotta put the pen somewhere else. No, not in my ass, no. I'm gonna put it, oh, I'm gonna put it in my shoe. Anyone in there? Yeah, I'll be right out. It's fucking go time. Hey, how's it going? What were you doing in there? I was just using the bathroom, sir. Well, I heard you coughing in there, and you know... I think you might be vaping in there, bud. Oh, nah, sir, you got it all wrong. I don't vape. Bro, stupid, he thinks I vape. Nah, bro, I was just smoking. Oh, fuck. Well, I do have probable cause to search you, so, you know, why don't you just empty your pockets for me? Oh, sure, no problem. Um. Mm-hmm. See, nothing. Nothing in here, nothing out of the ordinary. All right, uh, now take off your shoes. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry? Oh, no, no, yeah, I'll, t I'll take them off, I'll take them off. Huh. Well, I guess you're good to go. Sorry about that. Somehow my guy didn't see the fucking pen in my shoe. So I speed walk back to class fast as fuck because I'm tweaking at this point. And I sit down back next to Rennie and he's like, what's up? And I'm like, bro, you're not gonna fucking believe what just happened. It's safe to say I didn't smoke in school for the rest of the day. And I went home, got in my bed, and passed the fuck out because you really thought I was about to do homework for real. 13k, 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 13k. <coughs> Free young dog. Free gonna. One, two, three. <coughs> you made my earthquake. <coughs> you made my earthquake. <coughs> you love shaking me up. So it's a normal day. I'm chilling at home. I'm playing some zombies. Uh. This video flopped really bad. Please like this video so the algorithm uh, likes me. Okay. Anyways, I'm sitting at home. I'm playing some zombies. I get a call from my boy Steve. You know how this goes by now, but if you're new around here, I'll give you uh, a little a little lay of the land, okay? Bro. What's good, Steve? <coughs> Yo, you trying to chill? Oh, boy, sleepover? Pause. Say less. I got John with me. All right, word. So the boys are in route. And I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm a little hyping tin. It's been a while since we had a boy's sleepover. But anyway, they pull up and they got hella stuff. My boy John got his Xbox. All right. Steve got his Xbox and a TV. So, oh, ho, ho. Best believe we're going to be playing zombies all night. But anyway, you know, I dabbed the boys up as per usual a little. Uh, ha, ha. And we start getting this setup going. John starts plugging in the Xbox. Steve sets up his TV on the ground. Bro's literally laying on the ground. So we got three Xboxes hooked up. We got Black Ops 2 installed. We downloaded Buried. We are hype. There's only one thing missing. And I think you and I both know what that is. The booth pack and the Benjamin. Both of those items. So we hit the bathroom. Pause. 
hot. My bathroom is the designated sesh spot. It's just fire for it. We like to do this thing that we call a scenery change, okay? Because I have these LED lights. So when we go in the bathroom, I go on my phone and I pick a random color LED light. We then proceed to get high in pitch black dark. Oh, bro, where's my jewel? <coughs> oh, there it is. Bro, bro. What? You just grabbed my ass. No. Nah, I'm out of here. Oh, oh my god, I'm so high. Oh, boys, we're playing Buried. Let's go. So we proceed to play Buried for like two hours. We didn't do good, okay? We were very high. We were going down at like round seven. It was abysmal. It was very bad. When suddenly we all collectively got a case of the munchies. Yo, Split, you got snacks? Um, I got like Pop-Tarts. Oh, damn. Yeah, I don't really have anything in the crib right now, bro. Well, stinky gas station run? No. Boys... Gas station Stinky run. gas station run. It's like midnight at this point, okay? And if y'all have ever been in a gas station past midnight, you would just know that it's it's rather unpleasant. If we didn't go, we wouldn't have snacks, and the night would be ruined, quite honestly. So before we go, I decide to pregame myself a little bit. I take Steve's pen, and I take a Wampington off it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, y'all. This one set me over the edge. We go downstairs and we hop in Steve's absolute Millennium Falcon. Yo, where's John? Oh, he's outside. Oh, he's outside. Guys. Yeah, that's what I said. Don't unlock it. Don't unlock it. It's not like keep it locked. Oh, it's cold, bro. <laughs> and we set off on our mini adventure to the gas station. I am tweaking in Steve's passenger seat. I was very close to greening out. You know when you get the shakes? I had the shakes the entire ride there. I was just tweaked out. Out, bro. But anyway, we pull up at the gas station, and it seems as though John has changed his mind. He didn't come in, he didn't want anything, so me and Steve step out of the Millennium Falcon and we walk into the gas station. <coughs> what are you gonna get, bro? I'm gonna get some chips. Oh, word. I'm looking for some candy. And Bev. Don't forget the Bev. Oh, bro, I wonder if they have the, uh... Dog, I'm faded. <sighs> Never mind, I'll tell you later, bro. I'm trying to paint y'all a visual picture of this guy, alright? Imagine it's like a six foot tall guy with glasses, long greasy hair, a trench coat, and a killer clown shirt. I'm, I'm scared to say the least. This did not help my high in, in any way. We ended up just grabbing the thing closest to us because we just wanted to get out of there. By the time we got home, we realized that we grabbed cream soda, white cheddar Cheez-Its, and a body armor. And we were a little annoyed because, quite honestly, we didn't want any of this. But as the night went on, me and Steve really couldn't stop thinking about what happened at the gas station. I mean, this dude was just standing there, making eye contact with both of us, just breathing. Just, just breathing, not saying anything. It was like 20 seconds of eye contact. But the best way to get over something like that is to just smoke more. So that's exactly what we did. And we proceeded to play COD Zombies until like 4 a.m. I'm not gonna lie with y'all, we were pretty cracked. Although we were like in the stratosphere high, we played Ascension on Black Ops 3, all right? We got to like round 38. Now I know that's nothing crazy, but hey, it's pretty impressive for a bunch of inebriated people. But eventually we got bored of playing zombies. We hopped off, you know, smoked a little more. You gotta get that smoke before bedtime. And Steve's grand idea was, hey, let's put on a bunch of scary shit on the TV. So, you know, we all sat there, went to bed to scary noises. I'm not gonna lie, I was tweaking up until the point that I literally fell asleep. I'm not gonna lie, the boys just left like an hour ago. We woke up at like noon. Very irresponsible. But you know what's more irresponsible than that? Not following me on Instagram, alright? How many times do I have to sit? I love you guys so much. Hopefully this video doesn't get demonetized because YouTube has been absolutely destroying me over the past week. But it's fine. You know, we'll overcome. We'll get over it. Thank you so much for 27k. I love you guys. Make sure you turn on the bell because I'm going live all this week. Um, other than that, peace, fellas. And sometimes I look in your eyes And that's where I find A glimpse of love Said I'm fine Said I moved on I'm only here passing time in your arms Hoping I'll find A glimpse of love Top Gun Maverick Top Gun Maverick <laughs> If you're going to the movies in 2022, there's a 95% chance that you are on some type of drug. Because honestly, who in their right mind would want to go see a movie when you can just stream it on Netflix for free? Because in all honesty, the main reason you're going to the movies is to smoke, sit down, and just...
have a bunch of delicious snacks. So that's exactly what me and the boys decided to do one day. But we didn't just want to go to the movies. We wanted to get fucking plastered at the movies. So we decided to hit up a bunch of our boys to come to the movies with us. You might remember my boy John from the last video. But he decided to invite this, let's just say, different kid from his work. And we're going to call him Noel. Noel has a bathroom issue in which he has to go to the bathroom every 15 minutes. Which is fine, you know, I'm not hating, but I mean, when you're watching a movie, you're gonna be fucking lost. But we're like, you know what, fuck it, let's, let's, go, let's go see Top Gun Maverick tonight. So 9.30 rolls around, we all get in the car, my girlfriend drives because she's sober, and we set off to go to the movies. I'm high as fuck, I'm high as fuck, I'm high as fuck, bitch. So we pull up to the theater, and I quickly realize all of us are way too high to function. But you know, we gotta get the snacks. We had the fucking munchies. So we walk up to the counter, and I'm like, you know what? I'll go first. What can I get for ya? Yeah, can... can I get... um... Yep. Uh, uh, pop popcorn? Can I popcorn? get a popcorn? Yeah, yeah, uh, popcorn. That'll be thirty-two fifty. <laughs> So after that existential crisis, you know, I paid for my food, everything went well. Uh, where, where do I put my card? You swipe it on the... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, on the... No, no, not no? there. Oh. No, uh, um, Just give me it, give me it. Oh, oh, you'll, ta you'll take it? So everyone buys their shit, and we start walking over to the theater. And we find our seats, and we sit down, and you know, all is good. We're a little early for the movie, though, so we gotta watch those previews. Coming soon to Bro, a I don't give a you. fuck. And we get all settled in, and then I look to my left, and there's this homeless guy towering over Noel. This is my seat. Actually, I, I think it's my seat. Get the fuck out of my seat. At that exact time, Noel's bathroom problem decided to kick in. So he says, hey, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and I'm also gonna run up to my car so I can grab my water bottle. So we're like, all right, we'll save him a seat for when he comes back. This motherfucker was gone for 45 minutes. The movie has already started at this point, and this motherfucker comes back looking like he just ran a marathon. Bro, where were you? Well, I had to piss, and I had to get my fucking water bottle, and then I couldn't find the right theater, so I kept walking into random theaters, but I finally found the right one, so it's okay. So he sits down, and you know, all is good, we're watching the movie. Until my boy Steve breaks out the nachos. And we're sitting next to each other, and we are high as fuck at this point. And I look over to him, and I'm like, Yo, you should, you should let me get one of those. Yeah, for sure, I got you. And he dips this shit into the cheese. Unbeknownst to me, hands it to me, I drop it, it fucking goes everywhere. And now I'm sitting there in a pitch black theater with cheese all over my shirt. And Noel thought this was the funniest shit he's ever seen. <laughs> shut the fuck up, shut up, shut up, shut up. He got the cheese. Shut on the his fuck shirt. up. So he gets up, goes to the bathroom again, as per usual. And we're sitting there and we're really feeling this weed, man. I mean, like, we are fucking gone. And this movie is loud. We're feeling like fucking. F1 fighter pilots. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, I'm having a fucking out-of-body experience right now. But Noel comes back, contains himself, sits down, and we finish the movie. So on the way out, me and my boy Steve were like, hey, you know, the weed's kind of worn off. Uh, rather not smoke in the car, so why don't we just go into the bathroom? <laughs> so we go to the bathroom, and uh, I just gotta say this. Pause, but we go into the handicap stall. Steve whips out the dab pen, as per usual, and we take three fat fucking hits from this. And you know, we're feeling good. We step out the bathroom, you know, get back in the car, and we're fine. And then we realize, yo, we're still kind of hungry. So the only thing open around this time is a 7-Eleven. And we're like, hey, we're fucking baked. Let's go to 7-Eleven, get some fucking Doritos or some shit, right? And we get to 7-Eleven, and I swear to God, the guy working at the 7-Eleven is the most talkative motherfucker I've ever met in my life. First of all, we walk in, and he's blasting Nav. So already, like, we're set up for failure. But, you know, we get our snacks, I go to pay, and my high ass goes, Huh, so you like Nav? I fucking love Nav, man. I'm listening to Nav 24-7. And I'm trying my hardest to keep it together, but I, I can't fucking contain it. I burst out laughing in his face, and, you know, he looked, he looked pretty offended. I mean, I feel bad. After that, I just decided, hey, let's let's just call it a night. It's late as fuck. We're all high, and we got work tomorrow. So we drop off Steve and John, and I get home, and I pass the fuck out. <laughs> Yo, it's a nice-ass day. Yeah, it really is. Yo, what the fuck was that? Help! 
Oh shit! Help him, you're a lifeguard! Bro, I don't even work here. What do you mean? <laughs> Call me when you want. Call me when you need. Call me in the morning, I'll be on the way. Call me when you want. Call me when you need. Call me up by your name, I'll be on the way. So this story takes place last summer. My girl had this part-time job over the summer as a pool monitor at her apartment complex. The words pool monitor are very important. Nowhere in the job description does it say lifeguard. But with that out of the way, it was a hot summer morning. Like, I'm gonna say it's about 90 out. And my girl had a shift scheduled for, I think it was 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I didn't have shit to do that day. So she was like, hey, why don't you come with me to my shift? You know, we can chill out by the pool. It's pretty chill. I'm like, all right, word. So we get in the car, you know, I take a smacking tin off the Benjamin as per usual, and we get on our way. So we pull up to the pool, you know, we get out and we're like, oh, it's about to be a chill ass day. There's nobody here. And it was like a Thursday. It was a weekday. It was not the weekend. So I didn't really envision it being too busy. So, you know, she takes the key. She unlocks the gate, flips the sign. The pool's open and we're chilling for a couple hours. Nobody came. You know, we're sitting in the heat. I got the Nintendo Switch with me, so we're playing some Mario. I'm faded than a hoe. Life is good. And then the first family rolls up. It was a lady and two kids. And you know, they get in the pool, they're doing their thing. We're not really paying attention. I mean, we're keeping an eye on them, making sure they don't die. But you know, shit's going good. I mean, you know how it is at a public pool. <laughs> hey! No fucking oh. running! I'm sorry. You gotta sit out for five minutes, asshole. Okay, I won't do it again. Five minutes later. <laughs> Ah, my ears! What the fuck did I just say? So it's basically a whole lot of that. But then her kid starts doing some wild shit. This motherfucker is running and jumping into the fucking deep end. And each time he does it, it's very clear that he does not know how to swim. Like, he is narrowly escaping with his life every single time. And I just want to know what the fuck was going through that lady's head. This is the worst parent of all time. She doesn't give a fuck. Her kid's almost dying. <laughs> 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 again, again. And me and my girl are just looking at each other like, what the fuck is happening? But hey, if you thought it wasn't fucking dangerous already, then this bitch decides to get into the pool. And she swims worse than her fucking son. This bitch, I shit you not, is in the shallow end, face down for what seemed like two minutes. Like, we were getting concerned. And by this time, more families were coming in, so it was getting a little more crowded. But there's not really much we could do. Like, I specifically remember her boss saying, if anyone drowns, call me or the police. Don't jump in and try to save them. And sure enough, this bitch starts fucking drowning. And her stupid fucking family is looking at my girlfriend like, how come you're not helping? And in my head, I'm just like, how come you're not helping your fucking family member? Oh, and I almost forgot. The one tool we actually had to save someone, it was like this little floaty device. Her fucking kid is playing with it on the other side of the pool. So, you know, I go up to him and I'm like, hey, buddy, uh, I need that. I think your mom's fucking drowning. No, I want to play with it. And hey, I don't even work there, so I'm not about to argue with this kid. It's in God's hands now. So we're getting ready to call her boss and be like, hey, this bitch is dying. When one of her family members finally jumps in and helps her. Keep in mind, this is the shallow end of the pool. It is two feet deep and this bitch almost died. After that, we were like, fuck this. And we kicked everyone out and we closed the pool for today because honestly, I'm not trying to have blood on my hands. So we get in the car, go back to the crib, and I pass the fuck out. Dun, that dun, girl is dun, a real crowd pleaser. Yo, bro, you wanna hit it again? <laughs> yeah, he hit again. <laughs> nah, 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 don't be a bitch. Bitch, I'll wake up. No stylist. <laughs> Precious. <laughs> So it's 8 p.m. and I just got out of work. I get home, you know, I sit down on the couch. I'm like, finally, I get to relax. Word, I'm about to play some PlayStation. This fucking kid. What's up, bro? Bro, dead ass, bro. You gotta come over right now. For right real. now? For real, you gotta come over bro, right now, bro. it's 8 p.m. Bro, we got bro, John. Who's there? And we got Noel. Oh, you got bro, Noel? Got oh, I'm Noel. on the way. If y'all don't know who Noel is, you also go check out my Too High at the Movies video before you watch this, because... You gotta get the lore of Noel. But just in case you haven't seen that, Noel is John's, we're gonna say, different friend from work. And uh, he has a bathroom issue where he has to go to the bathroom every five minutes. Uh, glad that we got that out of the way. Let's keep going. So I look at my girl and I'm like, babe, 
we gotta go over to Steve's house. He got Noel there, and it's his first time ever being there. We gotta go. So, naturally, she's like, hell yeah. We hop in the car, and we make our way over to Steve's house. And we pull up to Steve's crib, and what do we see? We see Noel looking out the window, waving at us. And we're just like, this is gonna be fucking hilarious. So we get out the car, and we go up to Steve's house, you know, go inside, do the usual. And then we transition over to Steve's garage, because he wanted to show us something. Steve's garage is the certified fucking smoke hut. Bro has chairs, he's got a TV in there, a PlayStation, some snacks for the munchies, you know what I mean? So we sit down, and John gets to pack in the bowl. And you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm talking to Noel. Have you played any Fall Guys? recently. I can't say that I have, Noel. I can't say that I have. And this goes on for about five minutes, but eventually we start smoking. And my girlfriend doesn't- Whoa! My girlfriend doesn't smoke, and neither does Noel. But unlike my girlfriend, Noel is absolutely petrified of weed. So it's just me, John, and Steve smoking. And we're about one or two hits into the bowl each. And Noel just starts tweaking. Um, what's wrong, Noel? Can we go back inside? Oh, we just started smoking. Why do we gotta no, go inside? No, can, can we? I just, I left something. I left something in oh, your oh, room. Oh, you left Steve. something in his room? Yeah. Is it like medical? I kinda. So reluctantly, we put down the bowl and we go back inside the house to go up to Steve's room. And we get to Steve's room. Bro, where is it? Hmm. What, what, what do you lose? Where Should is be it? around here Bro, somewhere. Bro, don't tell me this fucking kid left his EpiPen in my room. Uh, I'm just kidding. I just wanted to go back to your room. Bro, what the fuck? So we take yet again another trip out to the garage to continue smoking. Noel offers to stand outside the garage because he doesn't like the weed. And at this point, we're just like, you know what? Fuck it, man. You can stay outside. But anyway, we finish smoking, and then Noel comes back in, and he's like, hey, uh... I I'm gonna go. So all three of us, you know, kind of looked at each other, gave us the nod of approval, dabbed up Noel, and sent him on his way. Noel honestly kind of killed the vibe for a little bit, which is why, you know, we just continued smoking, because there was really nothing else to do at that point. And you know, we got high. We got real fucking high. At one point, I couldn't even read. But we just kept smoking and getting higher and higher and higher. And at one point, Steve just blurts out this fucking preposterous phrase. Bro, you guys know that there's tweakers that live in my woods behind my house. That's why I have uh, all these weapons. And bro pulls out a BB gun and a tomahawk. For some fucking reason, all three of us collectively got paranoid as fuck that homeless people were gonna come into the garage. I mean, we damn near started fortifying this shit like it was Rainbow Six. I'm watching angles with this BB gun. And John got the tomahawk right behind me ready to Assassin's Creed 3 any fucking tweaker that comes in. I'm not gonna lie, I fired off a couple panic shots into the dark abyss of the woods behind Steve's house because I just didn't know what was there. You could say the fear got to me, and it quickly spread to the group because we just decided, fuck this, we're going in the house. And we get in the house, and just something about changing the scenery from where we were before made us completely forget that we were scared at all. But we all sat down at the table and, you know, just talked about random shit for hours. Until we all decided it's time we go our separate ways, so I went home, got in the bed, and pass the fuck out. Tell me what you really, really need to do, Oh, fuck. Take you out of your hands. Oh, this is really fake. Oh, fuck. Bro, I just got so much let weed. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Ha, <laughs> look at that, bro. What the fuck? Bro? Yo, this is at 21. 21. Can you do something for me? <laughs> Can you hit a little rich flex for me? No, 21. 21. First of all, I want to thank y'all for 14k. If uh, my calculations are correct, we'll hit 15k by the end of this week, which is pretty fucking awesome. But anyway, let's get into the story. This story starts like most of my stories. I was sitting home playing some Call of Duty when my boy Steve hit me up. Bro. What's up? Bro. Bro, you trying to come with me? I'm about to cop 28 grams. Word? For 120. 120, that's low. Yeah, no, nah, it's my boy, bro. Oh, it's your boy? Alright, bro, as long as we're not getting yeah. ass. So about 20 minutes later, Steve rolls up to my crib, and I hop in his car. And John's in the car, and I'm like, what's up, John? And he's like, bro, what's good? Bro, we're about to go get this weed. We're gonna, it's gonna be so much, bro. It's gonna be so much weed, and we're Jax. gonna be able, and we're gonna be, we're gonna be... Yo, you good? It was evident that John was already clapped. This has no significance to the story, but I just felt like adding it in. But anyway, you know, we're sitting in the car, and then the plug hits up Steve. You know, he sends the Addy, and then we go to pick up the 28 grams. And we roll up to the spot, Steve puts the car in park, and goes to talk to the plug. So it's just me and John in the car at this point, and we're speculating. We're like, 
You know, bro, What's up? 120 bills for 28 grams is really low. I yeah, feel like this cheap. weed is gonna be ass. Nah, it might be fire. You don't think so? Nah, bro, he wouldn't scam us. I don't know, man. But anyway, Steve hops back in the car and he's got the pack on him. And this shit is big. Like, it's 28 grams. That's a lot of bud. And he's like, boys, boys, investigate the pack and see if it's ass. So me and John start investigate this as Steve is driving back to the crib. Yo, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. What's up, what's up? This shit is ass. Yeah. What's up? This weed is trash, bro. Nah, nah, bro. L let me see, let me see. Uh... Oh, Steve has been fucking duped. And there's not really much we can do at that point. Like, bro already had the money. We had the weed. We were in different cities by then. So it's just kind of like, fuck, we're stuck with this fucking pack. Might as well smoke it, I guess, right? So we get back to the crib. You know, we pack a bowl. Oh, my father just dropped my Xbox controller. But anyway, we pack this bowl and we start smoking it. First of all, it burned in like two fucking seconds, which should never really happen with good weed. And, and the taste... Was just, I don't even know how to describe it. It was, it was like cardboard. It was just disgusting. But hey, don't take my word for it. Here's a picture of the fucking shit. What the fuck is that? Needless to say, we were pissed off for pretty much the rest of the day. Not a lot else really went on. Um, I did go to Target though, so here's a clip from that. Nothing really interesting. I was just faded than a bitch in Target. Um, speaking of being faded than a bitch, uh, if y'all want to get faded than a bitch with me, I made a Discord. The link is in the description. Uh, if you're over 18, feel free to join that shit. Uh, we have 24-7 smoke sessions, and we play a lot of video games in there. It's a great time. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to... Um, <laughs> I heard that you're happy without me, and I hope it's true. Yo. Yo, is he okay? Yeah, he took like three edibles. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I took the wall. I don't know about y'all, but me personally, I would prefer to smoke rather than take an edible. First of all, almost every edible I've tried has tasted like utter dog shit. Don't get me wrong, I like the smell of weed, but you know, when you mix that with like a fucking chocolate bar or something, it just tastes like ass. But anyway, I'm gonna be telling you guys about the last time I had edibles. This story takes place about a year and a half ago. I was living in this house and I was paying rent for one room. And I would do my best to stay in that room because honestly, the neighbors were fucking insane. But there was this guy that lived in the room next to mine and we're gonna call him, you know what? Fuck it, his name was John. Fuck this guy. If you're watching this right now, John, I hope you slip on a fucking banana peel and fall down the stairs. But anyway, one day John gets home from the dispensary and he's like, hey, I got these edibles, I'll give you some. I mean, like, yeah, I'm pretty skeptical about this fucking guy, but like, I was fiending for weed. I haven't had shit in weeks, so I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, yeah, I'll take some. So he hands me these two chocolate bars, but he takes them out of the package, so I don't really have the chance to, like, figure out how many milligrams they are, but I'm like, you know what? Uh, fucking... How bad could it really be? So, you know, I, I eat half of one because I'm like, I'm trying to be a little bit hesitant. I don't want to get too fucking high. Like, I still got shit to do. Like, it's 1 p.m. in the afternoon. But anyway, uh, I take this edible and I sit down and I'm waiting for my girlfriend to come over. And it's been about 45 minutes and I'm really, I'm not feeling shit. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to eat the other half. This was a critical mistake because passage one of Stone Relations clearly states, Thou must not say these edibles ain't shit. For this phrase will cause the next edible you eat to increase in potency by up to 5,000%. But as I'm eating this edible, my girlfriend rolls up and I'm like, oh great, perfect timing. And she's like, hey, let's go down to the beach and get some ice cream. And I'm like, you know what, that sounds like a fucking plan. That sounds great. So I hop in her car and we go down to the beach. And we're about halfway there when I start feeling the edible kicking in. And you know, it's not bad. Like, it's, uh, like I'm not too high. I'm at like a pretty mellow level. So I'm like, you know, this is perfect. And we get to the beach, we park, and then we go over to the ice cream stand. What can I get for ya? Yeah, I'll take one of those. This shit hit me like a fucking freight train. Yeah, can I get a v- uh, I'm, I'm sorry? Yeah, I want a vanilla cove. A, a vanilla- uh, A uh, chocolate sauce on Ch it. Chocolate sauce? Nobody told me edibles give you fucking speech impediments. I deadass couldn't form a sentence. But somehow, the guy knew what we wanted and gave us our ice cream.
So me and my girl start walking towards the beach, you know, I'm smacking this ice cream. But you know, I think, I think I'm doing okay, like, yeah, I'm really fucking high, but I think I'm keeping it together for the most part. Until it begins to get difficult to walk. Like, you know when you get so high that it just feels like someone turned up the gravity? Like, I'm walking with the worst fucking animations, dragging my fucking feet. But we get to the beach, we sit down, and you know, it's pretty chill for the most part. Me and my girl are just enjoying this ice cream and having a great day. So we chill there for a little bit, and then we're like, you know what, let's just go back to the house, we've been out here for long enough. So we get back to the car, and she starts driving home. I may have looked like I was alright, but inside, I was fighting fucking demons. Like, it felt like somebody turned up my FOV and dropped my resolution to 360p. I felt like I was looking through a fucking 3DS camera, and every single bump in the road made me even more nauseous. But anyways, we get back home, I have the most intense struggle of my life trying to get up the stairs. I lay down on my bed, and I proceed to have what might be the worst fucking high of my entire life. My fucking mouth is watering, I'm sweating, I'm shaking, and the only thing I can hear for this entire high is just humming. Um, You're gonna die. <coughs> You're dying. I guess the moral of the story is, when you say these edibles ain't shit, 90% of the time you're wrong. You should just wait for the first edible to kick in. But hey, who am I to tell you what to do? If you want to take another edible and you want to get absolutely fucking toasted, be my guest. Just don't say I didn't warn ya. Cups of the rosé. <coughs> yeah. Bitches in my old phone. Bitches in my old phone. She call one and go home. Ooh. I've been in this club too long. Bro, I'm cold as fuck. Daylight. <laughs> I woke up feeling like you all. So as a kid, winter was always my favorite season. You know, we get snow days, you get to stay home from school, you got Christmas, big creepy guy comes into your house at night and gives you gifts. But I think my favorite thing about winter was being able to sled. It's just something about going at breakneck speeds down a hill with little to no visibility. That just gave child me this immense joy. And my mom was aware of this, which is why when I asked her one day, hey, I'm gonna go outside and sled, she was like, all right, go ahead. But you and I both know I was not going to sled. I was going outside to get fucking baked. So my boy Carl earlier texted me and said, Hey, come down to the school. I'm in the woods behind it. I got some weed. So I'm like, bet. And at the time where I lived, it was only about a five minute walk to the school. So, you know, it's no biggie. But anyway, I bring my sled and I got my snow pants on, right? And I embark on this journey. So I get to the school and I meet up with my boy Carl. You know, dab him up, do the usual. And he's like, hey. I got this weed, let's smoke it. And I'm like, fuck yeah. There's only one problem though. Why? What's that? I, I don't know how to roll. And I'm like, I know how I, 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 I know how to roll. All right, I'm fucking 15, goddammit. So I proceed to roll the absolute worst well, fucking hell, joint bro? of all time. <laughs> like this shit looked like somebody <laughs> chewed it and spit it back out. It was fucking horrible. But we didn't give a fuck. We were in middle school at that time, and any weed was good weed. So we're like, you know what, let's just spark it up, fucking make the best of it. So we finished smoking, you know, we're chilling, and we're like, hey, you know what, let's just, let's go to the sub shop downtown, and let's get a fucking sub. I'm just gonna preface this by saying snow pants are not breathable. We're walking through the fucking snow, dude, and I am sweating balls. But we get to the sub shop, and as per usual, I'm volunteered to order first. <sighs> Yeah, man. Are you okay? Let me get a... Uh, okay. Yo, is this guy good? Me meatball. Um. Me me meatball sub. Meatball sub. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. One of those, right. please. Right. So after that absolute social war crime, I get my sub. I sit down and I'm like, finally, I get to sit down and I get to eat this sub, and I absolutely dog this shit. But as I was eating this, I didn't realize that the temperature of being inside actually caused all the snow on me to melt. So I'm just sitting there, soaking wet, eating a sub, fucking heavy breathing. Don't get me wrong, Carl's doing the same shit. And people are just staring at us like we're fucking maniacs. So we finish our subs and we look at each other and we're like, you know what, let's get out of here before someone calls the cops on us. And on our walk home, we started to notice that the snow was getting a little bit heavier. But before we could really react, we get blasted by what felt like a Category 4 hurricane. I mean, dude, this was a fucking blizzard. And I'm walking high as fuck, sweating, nauseous from the sub, because in all honesty, like, when have you ever eaten a sub and not had to go to the bathroom 20 minutes later? 
But anyway, I make it to my house, and we go our separate ways. And I go upstairs, knock on the door, and go inside my house. So how was sledding? Yeah, it was good, bye. And I got to my room, and I passed the fuck out. I just want to thank all of you for the support you've given me in the past few videos I've made. Um, I honestly didn't expect them to hit 10 views, so thank you. And, um, yeah, here's a couple little comments that I thought were, uh, quite sweet for me all. Shawty, like a melody in my head that I can't keep going, got me singing like, na 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 na, every day, got my <laughs> stuck on replay. Bang. Sir. Bang. <laughs> Sir, what, what are you doing? <laughs> the ball Bang. bounces. Bang. Sir, I'm gonna have Bang. to ask you to leave. Beautiful morning, you're the son of my <coughs> morning, babe. Nothing in the water. water, water. Getting high and going to department stores has been somewhat of a ritual to me for the past few months. Usually going to places like Walmart or Target is just boring. You're usually there just to pick up some random stuff and get out. But if you smoke before you go to one of these places, your errands just turn into side quests. You're gonna be feeling like the fucking dragonborn going to get some toilet paper. But my favorite out of all these stores to go to has to be Walmart. Walmart, unlike Target, is open until the fucking wee hours of the night. This means that the doors are open to whoever wants to go inside. Some of my favorite Walmart characters are random crackhead greeting people at the main entrance. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? Yeah, welcome to Walmart. Welcome to Walmart. You got money. You got, you got five dollars. Mentally unstable lady yelling at the shirts. I told them I don't want cheese. And let's not forget me. High as fuck. When I smoke and go to Walmart, everything becomes a hundred times more interesting. Bro, they have glasses that makes everything bigger? <laughs> no way! They have, a, they have a cooler that you don't have to put ice in. But don't even get me started on the real reason I go to Walmart. Yeah, maybe I'm out of paper plates, maybe I'm running low on tissues. But there's always that thought in the back of my head, and I know I'm not alone. That deep down, all us boys really need is to just see the toy section. I'll be fried as hell shooting Nerf guns. Um, <laughs> sir, you can't play with that. <laughs> Get the fuck up. Absolutely whipping bikes up and down the aisles. <laughs> oh shit. Making massive decisions such as, Should I get the Lego Anakin? Or... Or the Mandalorian speaker bike, because the Mandalorian speaker bike- If you can take anything away from this, firstly it would be, I'm not condoning any of this. But if you do find yourself in a Walmart, high as fuck, don't be afraid to slow down and appreciate the little things. Life is stressful as hell, and sometimes all you really need is just to be a little fucking silly goofball. Buy that $100 Nerf gun. Will your wallet like it? Eh, probably not, but will you? Yeah. That's all that matters. That was terrible advice, don't take it. But you know what isn't terrible advice? Me telling you to go follow my Twitter, that was so fucking bad. I wanna talk to you little fucking goobers, you, you, little, you little stoners, you. And finally, before I shut up and sing you a beautiful outro, I wanna thank you for all the love and support you've given me. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say, I don't deserve it, but uh, I plan on sticking around, so let's see how this goes. And sometimes I look in your eyes And the stronger I feel of us You feel anything, bro? Nah, not really. Let me hit it one more time. Oh, for sure, bro. I got you. Yeah, hold it in. Word. What the fuck? Yo, are you good, my guy? I couldn't think of an intro song, so here's a random shitty song that I just made up right now. So this story takes place a few years ago. I was chilling with my boy, we're gonna call him James. And James was not really a big smoker, but you know, he smoked from time to time. And you know, I was chilling with James, we were playing some Call of Duty, and he's like, bro, I got this weed last night, and I got a blunt, we should roll it up, go outside and smoke it real quick. And I'm like, oh ho ho, for sure. 
So James gets to rolling this blunt. Keep in mind, like I said, he's not really a big smoker, so this blunt is looking rough. I mean, like, it's looking bad. And, you know, we're shooting the shit, and I'm like, hey, where'd you get this weed from? And he's like, oh, I got it from Greg. Greg was the local crackhead. I mean, this guy was a fucking fiend. He was into the hard shit. Meanwhile, me and my friends were just kind of chilling around weed, sometimes alcohol. And, you know, that kind of triggered something in my brain. You know, I got a little skeptical of the weed. But, you know, like, what's the worst thing that happens? It's not gonna be fucking laced, right? Cap. This shit was 100% laced. As soon as I hit that shit, I knew something was wrong. It felt like Mike Tyson ran up to me and duffed me in my fucking chest. I was coughing my lungs out, and as I'm coughing my lungs out, I'm starting to, like, like, go deaf almost. Not really, but, like, shit is getting muffled, you know what I mean? And I look about James, and he just looks fucked up. And this is one of the last times I chilled with James, honestly. Because at that point, I was so fucked up and out of it, I was just like, bro... I gotta go home. So I dab him up and I get on my way. See, my house in relation to James' house was about a 10 minute walk, which is not too bad, but when you just smoke some lace shit, bro, that shit felt like an hour. As I was walking, I literally started hearing like a choir in my head. What the fuck? But I make it to my house, you know, I go inside my room, no one's home, thankfully, and I sit down on my bed and I'm just like, what the fuck? And I'm sitting there and I realize that my vision is getting fucked up. Like, I can't really focus on shit, and it feels like someone turned on film grain. And then I get hit with a sudden wave of nausea. So I stumble my ass all the way to the bathroom, and I start fucking puking. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck, please, please. I was so fucked up that I didn't even shower afterwards. I went back to my bed and I passed the fuck out. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I never found out what was in that weed, but I was fucked up for like maybe three or four days. I remember going to school the next day and seeing James and he was still fucked up too. I guess the moral of the story is don't buy weed from Greg. I mean, honestly, if you think the weed you're about to smoke is laced, don't even fucking smoke it. It's not worth the risk. I got off lucky. I could have been a fucking statistic, but I live to tell another day. Okay, that's it. Love you. Bye. Whoa, 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 caught in a terrible I'm at it up, at it up, I just ate a fucking oh, plate for breakfast Put it in a cup, then I mix it up with tech I'd like to think of myself as an experienced smoker I mean, generally, I can handle my shit I've only greened out about two or three times But, in one way or another, every king has his fall from grace My fall from grace just happened to be about three days ago me and my girl were at this farm, you know, looking for pumpkins. It's October, it's spooky Ooh, season. So, you know, we end up picking a pumpkin. It's, it's, it's a little, it's a little pumpkin. You know, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys the pumpkin. Look, look, how, look how cute it is. It's so, it's so little. But, you know, we got a few more errands to run. So, we get back to the car, and I'm like, hold on. Before we embark on these errands, I'm gonna try this thing that I saw on a TikTok. I don't recommend anybody ever does this, but I saw a TikTok that if you take a cart and you put it on a vape charger, it'll rip. And my tweaker ass was like, hey, that sounds like a fucking great idea. So I plugged the vape charger directly into the car console. I put the cart on and I take a hit. <sighs> oh, oh. <sighs> This was a much larger hit than I initially thought I was going to get, let's just say that. I roll down the window and smoke is fucking billowing out of this car. I'm surprised people weren't concerned for our safety thinking the car was on fire. And my girl's like, hey. That, that was a pretty big hit. Uh, are you okay? Oh, no. <laughs> like, you know when you can just tell that you're gonna have a shitty fucking high? That's what I felt. But anyway, I'm like, you know what? Just drive, let's go get those errands done, I'll power through it. And we're about five minutes into our ride, and I'm having a fucking out-of-body experience. I start to literally feel each individual organ operating on its own. But anyway, we make it to the grocery store. We walk in, and I'm just silently panicking the entire fucking time. Bro, I'm gonna puke. I'm gonna fucking... Is that guy a cop? Bro, why am I walking so fucking fast? But against all odds, I'm somehow still mildly conscious by the time we get to the register. And the guy in front of us in this line was, like, an older gentleman, and he was buying some classic Coca-Cola. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? Um... <laughs> 
Oh, well, that's too bad to hear. I hope your day gets better. If you don't mind, uh, I just got to put a sticker on that Coca-Cola for you. So I'm just going to grab that. All right, and I'm just going to open this handle for you, make it a little easier for when... This motherfucker ripped open the entire top of the soda, and the old guy was not happy about it. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, what sir. What the fuck? What are you doing? I don't know. You're shit at your job. No, I'm not. You're never going to be able to work anywhere else it's like my this. Third day. What the fuck? I mean, I felt terrible for the kid. It was clearly an accident, but you know, it, it made for some good high entertainment. I'm not going to lie. But you know, we pay for the groceries. Meaning, uh, my girlfriend paid for the groceries because I was too fucking inept to take my card out of my wallet. We drive home, I go up to my bed, and I pass the absolute... <laughs> fuck out. Also, I made a Discord, the link is in the description, uh, you should go join it, love you, bye. I want by my side when I fall asleep. Tell me what I'm waiting for, Yo, bro, you gotta hit this cart. Yo, this shit look bunk. Nah, it's real, it's real. Nah, bro, it's brown. Nah, this is how it looks, bro, trust me. Alright, yeah, just hit it, Whatever, bro. dude. Yeah. <laughs> what the oh, f- Oh, I've been consumed. <laughs> I'm not for sale. Ah. Man, what the hell? Today's society can be divided into two parts. There's the people that smoke the good carts. And then there's the people that are ripping the Mario cards. Sometimes you can't even really tell if a card is real or fake. But I'm gonna give y'all some pointers. <laughs> Don't get the shitty cards! So the first tip I'm gonna give y'all is the bubble test. Basically, if you look at your cart and that shit's liquidy and it's got hella bubbles in it, my guy, you're smoking some fucking gas station shit. There is no world in which you will have a cart and you'll flip it over and it'll immediately transfer to the top. Like, you don't want your shit to be watery. Don't buy no carts off the street if you don't want fentanyl. Listen, I'm guilty of this too. I bought plenty of street carts, but you really don't know what's inside them. So I would recommend going to your local dispensary, you know, seeing what they have. Yeah, it's gonna be a little more expensive, but you know exactly what's in your cart and you know that it's safe. Read the package. Read the label on the package. It'll tell you stuff about it. Most legit cards will have like a little QR code on the package that you can scan with your phone and verify online if it's real. But don't be fooled. I got a card a couple months ago. Actually, I'm going to play the video right now. And it's literally fucking... Like, what the fuck? This shit's fake. Yeah. What fucking color is this shit, bro? So as you can see, you don't really know what the fuck are in these things if you're buying them off the street. This is a last ditch effort, don't do it intentionally, but if you do... If you really decide to rip that fucking shitty cart, dude, you're gonna feel it. If you've been smoking for any amount of time, you'll be able to easily tell when a cart is fake. Like, sometimes you'll just rip a cart and be teleported to another fucking dimension. <sighs> We are high, we are very much high, but it's not a regular high. Listen, us stoners gotta stick together. If you guys have any tips for staying safe while smoking, drop them down in the comments. Also, I made a Discord, uh, we do a 24-7 smoke session there, so, you know, if you're over 18, go join that shit. Uh, link will be in the description. And, actually, I'm dropping a song on Friday, so I'll put the pre-save link in the description for y'all if y'all could go, go, you know, give that a little pre-save on Spotify, I'd appreciate it a lot. I love you guys, I'm trying to get a little more consistent consistent with my uploads, so expect a few more videos out this week, and uh, yeah, stay safe. And I'm rockin' it, blood red, vim, and co. Mm -hmm. I put Kalesi all over my body, I twist a Balenci, my shoes and my <laughs> Yo, who's the teddy? You didn't wanna convert him. <laughs> Send him to me like, blah, blah. Happy birthday oh, to you. you shouldn't have to you, happy yeah. <laughs> to you. To you. Happy birthday oh, to you. Split. Oh my god. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Shut up. And I hope you don't expect to be my girlfriend. LA Confidential. LA Confidential. I think you know I never leave my girlfriend. Today's video, we are going to be using a random fucking song that uh, is in like the YouTube like copyright free thing. So I hope it's not dumb. 
<laughs> so my birthday was a few days ago, and it wouldn't have been a proper split birthday if I wasn't faded than a hoe. I wake up like any other morning. I pick up the Benjamin before I even open my eyes, and I take a stinky blinky off it, okay? And I'm feeling swell. I'm feeling fucking splendid, honestly. I open my eyes, I exhale, and I look up, and there's water dripping from my ceiling. And the water dripped onto my setup, and that was very bad. But I wasn't gonna let that ruin my birthday. Um, my girl got me some purple Nike tech, bro. This shit is fire as fuck, hella yeah. comfortable. And she took me out to Olive Garden for lunch like she was Rick Ross and I was an Instagram model, but that's besides the point. The day goes on and we are preparing for the special birthday night. You all know where this is going if you've watched me for a little bit. It's Split's birthday. Yes, it and is. And I got weed. Yes, sir. So, Split, can I come to your crib? You sure can. So, so weed. We can smoke a lot of weed. <gasps> I'll be over in 20, and I got John too. So the boys pull up, and they got gifts. What's good, Split? Birthday shit? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Open my first, open my right, first. Word, word. <laughs> open his, open his. Ah! That shit's fine. Alright, open mine, open mine. Alright, word, word. Oh my god, the Fortnite cart! <laughs> Okay, it wasn't a Fortnite cart, but it was it was a good cart, all right? You already know we hit the bathroom. Pause. Uh, if you've seen the last video, this will make sense. If it doesn't, I'm going to explain it right now. Um, it's not weird. Uh, we just smoke in my bathroom because it's like a fire smoke sesh by you, fam. So, you know, we get absolutely obliterated off this cart. And then we're sitting around. We're like, what the fuck are we going to do? It's my birthday. We got to do something. And my girl comes up with the idea of let's go bowling. And I'm like... Fuck, I've like never been bowling. Maybe once when I was like six, but I've retained none of that information. I don't know how fucking bowling works, but fuck it, let's do it. So we all take one more absolute stinker tin off the pen, and we enter Steve's Millennium Falcon. Steve driving the Mobile. City. John in the car. City. We about to get. City. I lost my voice. We about to get drunk. It's my birthday. So you know, ah! at this point, we're just all vibing the music, and we're on our way to the fucking bowling alley. Classic bowling. Out. Now listen, I'm not trying to turn this into a life lesson, but you should drive sober. You should not drive under the influence. Very bad, Steve. My guy missed the bowling alley. Not that much of a problem. He thought, hey, let's just pull into this McDonald's and turn around. You know, we're all on board with that. Sounds like a great plan. Wrong! We pull into this McDonald's, and this shit is packed, bro. Like, there's hella people. The drive through is filled, and we're fucked. You can't go around it because of the way that it curves. This is the shittiest design fucking McDonald's, by the way. The way that it curves and, like, the where the parking spots are, like, we were just stuck, okay? Excuse my colorful language, but this absolute fucking idiot in front of us could have just moved up, a, like, like, two inches, and we would have been able to scoot by, but nah, bro wanted to be an asshole and fucking stay put. Whatever. So about 20 excruciating minutes later, we finally get out of the McDonald's, and we make our way to the bowling alley. We are in the bowling alley parking lot, and we decide to get a little bit more obliterated because, dude, it's a special occasion, all right? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You got the shit, John. Going. I can't. You I can. can. You can. You can, John. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Let's go. We walk into this bowling alley. <laughs> Fucking fry. I'd go as far to say that this is, like, top five highest I've ever been. Bro, go up to the cashier Why and me? ask her to... to to, to play a game? I don't yeah. even know. How do you even say that Why shit? the fuck can, do I gotta do I that get, shit? You do it. Like, four bowls? Like, I don't Bro, I actually understand don't know bowling terminology. No, just ask. No, just I'm not doing dude, that Dude, just go shit, fucking bro. ask her. So, you know, John bites the bullet. He goes up and asks. And the lady tells him if we wanted to wait, like, I think it was like 20 minutes, we'd get 50% off our bowling because, like, after 8 o'clock. I don't really fucking care. Uh, basically, uh, we went to the arcade first. Balance $20. Oh, I'm about to win this shit. Fuck! Balance $10. Nah, you already know we better win this shit. Fuck! Broke bitch, fuck out my arcade, broke boy. What? Basically, blew a bunch of money. Um, actually, though, we did win a rubber ducky. Um, here's a picture of him. I buckled him up in Steve's Millennium Falcon just to make sure that he was safe from his erratic drunk driving. But anyway, it was time to bowl, so we went over to the counter, we paid for our shit, and we got our shoes. Not gonna lie, my shoes were like one size too big, but I didn't want to say anything, so I was kind of just floating around, you know? And I'm destroyed than a bitch. I'm high as fuck. And honestly, I don't really know how to bowl, but uh, here's a clip of me. Yep, pretty fucking horrendous. Uh, here's Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve is going in. For the Slightly less horrendous, but uh, still, we're not, we're not fucking making the league, alright? You may be wondering, how come I don't have any clips of John? That's because, unfortunately, 
The cart smacked John. Like, I mean, I'm gonna give you a visual uh, representation. We're even on total strikes at the moment. John was zoinky. My guy was in the bathroom for like half the bowling match. We fucking triple guttered him. Bro didn't even notice. The only way he's gonna know is from this video, actually. But yeah, we played for John and we, we triple guttered him in a row. Sorry. But you know, the night went on and it was our time to vacate the fucking premises. We gave back the yadas. And Steve came up with the idea of, hey, let's go hit the grocery store real quick and get split a birthday cake. So we did just that. You know, we hit the local. <laughs> Caught me a fire ass cake. And on the way home, we decided to drop off John because he was feeling like shit. Bro had to go home, had to completely obliterate his toilet. And hey, dude, I respected it. So, you know, we dabbed him up. He went on his way. And we went back to fucking split. Split estates. Oh, Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy so, birthday. you know, we absolutely eat the fuck out of this cake. We're faded. We're starting to feel like shit, man. I mean, we ate a lot of fucking cake. Me and Steve take one more blinks the time sweeper off the pen, dabs me up, and goes on his way. All in all, a pretty fire birthday. Now, I want you to guess what did I do after Steve went home? Alright? Get the options. What are you gonna pick? Oh, you're fucking wrong, bitch. It's I passed the fuck up. <laughs> I'm gonna sing the channel members' names right now. We have God and Leo Payton and Calamari and Cooper Leach. Cooper Leach and 50k Dawn and XX siphon underscore XX. I forgot the first underscore, but that's fine. And it sounds like a gamer tag, but that's a fire name. And we have Nemo. Thank you, Nemo. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Join my Discord and follow my Instagram. Okay, love you. Bye. Yo, get her number, man. Say less. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. Oh my god! Ooh, I'm swerving it daily. Ooh, I'm causing a man. Ooh, I'm fucking a bad. I buy me the crowd. I buy me the gym. I never need practice. My money gon' double and triple. Your money's so attractive. Today we will be using another random song from YouTube's copyright free library. What are we gonna get today? Oh shit, it sounds like Jet Set Radio. This story starts like any typical split story. I'm sitting home and I get a call from none other than the legendary Steve. And Steve's like, yo, I'm with John, we should chill. I'm like, bet, that's okay. But also, uh, my girl is going to a party tonight and she's gonna be drunk. So we are going to have to postpone getting drunk until after we pick her up, which is probably gonna be around midnight. To which Steve replied, Respectable, bro. I'll spare you all the boring shit. Nothing really happened until the boys came over. You know, they come up to the crib, I dab him up, a ha ha, the usual, but something was a little different. Steve had this kind of fire in his eyes. What's up, Split? What's up, Steve? What's good, John? I just chillin', just chillin'. I couldn't help but notice you got a yeah, you got a whole lot of alcohol over there. Oh, I do, bro. That's for tonight. Well, seeing as I'm not the one that's gonna be driving, yeah, I was uh, wondering if uh. I could. You want, bro, you can drink, you can drink, it's fine. So Steve cracks open a stinky mice heart, and we're just chilling, you know? I smoke up a little bit. We still got a few hours before we gotta pick my girl up. I'm not gonna get drunk, I don't wanna risk it, but I know I'm not gonna be high by the time we go to pick her up. Anyway, time goes on, we're just vibing to some music, chopping it up, having a little conversation. When Steve's like, hey bro, I'm pretty hungry, you got any snacks in the crib? And quite honestly, bro, I really didn't have any snacks in the crib. All I had were these, you know, like the little Ritz crackers that you can dip in into the cheese. I have one of those, so I graciously offer it to Steve. He says thank you, eats the Ritz crackers, and all is good for about 35 seconds. Yo, Steve, you good? Uh, you don't look so hot, man. Oh, uh, Steve's gonna puke. Steve's gonna puke. Steve's gonna puke. Steve's gonna. Puke. <laughs> Let me give y'all a little time frame. It's like maybe 7.30 and Steve has already puked. He's fucking tapped out. Honestly, I think it was the Ritz crackers, but I'm not ready to put that blame on myself. Eventually, Steve just fucking slumped. So at this point, me and John were like, damn, what are we gonna do for three hours? Obviously, we do what any sane human being would do and smoke even more. Yeah. <coughs> oh shit, you might wake him. Is he still sleeping? Nah, he out, he out. Damn! <laughs>
But the time rolls around where we gotta go pick up my girlfriend. There's only one problem. I don't have the address. And my girl was lit, alright? She was trying to tell me the address and this she was typing in fucking Chinese, dude. You know how drunk you gotta be to have autocorrect just flat out not work? But after about 20 minutes, I got a rough idea of where we needed to go. So we wake up Steve and we hop in the goddamn spaceship. The weather is garbage. It's pouring rain, it's foggy, it's pitch black outside, can't see shit. But somehow, we miraculously make it. We pull up to the party, it's like 11.30. And I text my girl, I'm like, yo, I'm outside, let's fucking go. Sounds simple, right? Just come outside, get in the car, and we leave. Uh, I guess not, because she was followed by about eight drunk bitches. Hey, baby. Alright, I'ma get in the car, I'ma get in the car. Oh my oh god, my is that god. your boyfriend? Yes, it is. Please get in. No, she has to stay. She has to Let stay. No, we should oh really be god. on our you way. Stay. Come, in. Come, in. Yeah, come in, come in, come in. Oh my god, fucking, okay. Now, some of you are probably wondering why I gave in. You see, Steve was trying to spit Riz to one of the girls in the party, and I had to take one for the team. But, you know, we get into the party when we are all met with the most uncomfortable fucking blast of estrogen. This was a girls-only party. And quite honestly, my girlfriend was the only normal bitch there. So, you know, we sit down on the couch, and basically all of these girls are almost blackout drunk. So it's clear that Steve will not be spitting any fucking Riz tonight. So, you know, we're sitting there, literally just on our phones, just waiting for it to be over. When this girl walks up to John. Hey, what's your name? Oh my god! Oh, my name's John. Oh, I like that. Yeah? <laughs> you want a cookie? I baked a cookie. I love cookies. I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, John's spitting some riz, John's spitting some riz. Then this bitch went and said some dumbass shit. Are you, are you smoking a, a weed pen right now? Oh, uh, yeah, you want a hit? Ugh. That, what? That's so bad for you. Just stop it. Just stop. This bitch walks out of the room and we're like, what the fuck was that? Then the girl that Steve was trying to spit Riz to drunkenly stumbles into the room and sits next to him and they start talking. Then the other bitch comes in like fucking Superman and is like, see, this is is not going to happen. I can assure you that. Who the fuck you, are you? I don't know what you're trying to do, mister. Huh? Bro, I don't you're know literally you're, you're built like a do, little boy. It's not gonna Someone happen. come get their son. So we're like, we gotta fucking get out of here. Well, I guess not. Uh, because my girl went to the bathroom and she puked four times on the wall. But she miraculously made it back before the ball dropped. Now, it was pretty weird because it was just me, Steve, John, and my girlfriend separated from the rest of the party. But we were in like the same room. You know like that meme? Yeah, it was kind of like that. But as soon as the fucking clock hit 12.01, we were out. To be fair, Steve was a little agitated. I mean, that girl that was built like a little boy came up and kind of ruined his fucking riz. He partly got his revenge. I mean, he found her air forces downstairs and just threw them into the fucking woods. So, I mean... Good luck finding those. But you know, we make it back to the crib safely. My girl goes upstairs and she hops in the shower. Me, Steve, and John decide to get fucking drunk. Because at this point, we deserve that shit. And honestly, we just chilled out for the rest of the night. We watched American Psycho. By the way, I know everyone and their mom has fucking seen that, but I've never saw it. So seeing that for the first time drunk and high, I was a little crossfaded, I'm not gonna lie. That shit was crazy. But anyway, we all passed the fuck out. Oh, ho, ho, it's not over. We all wake up hungover as fuck, and we're like, damn, we gotta go get some breakfast. Only problem is it's like 11.30. Not a lot of breakfast places are open, but anyway, we make our way to IHOP because you know that shit's gonna be open. We get there, and they're like, oh, it's unfortunately gonna be a 30-minute wait. We're like, nah, fuck that, we gotta eat now. So we go downtown, there's a little breakfast spot. You know, we find parking, me, Steve, and John engage in the honorary breakfast blinker. <sighs> Oh my god, a long ass hit. <laughs> and we're waiting in line for like 25 minutes. Honestly, if y'all have ever taken a blinker while hungover, no food in your system right after waking up, it's a terrible fucking experience. But you know what makes it worse? When you're waiting in line for 25 minutes and you get to the counter and they say, um, unfortunately, it's gonna be a 45 minute wait. You couldn't have told us when you saw us waiting in line for 25 minutes that it's gonna be 45 minutes to get food? Nah, fuck this. So we dipped from there and we ended up going to McDonald's. L fucking breakfast. Actually, I couldn't even call it breakfast because by the time we got to McDonald's, they stopped serving breakfast. So I had a fucking quarter pounder and fry for breakfast. Needless to say, our bodies were feeling like absolute shit. Steve and John were like, bro, 
To be honest, I just want to go home right now. I'm like, you know what? I respect it. I feel the same way. So we drop off Steve and John, go back home, and I pass the fuck out. Couple things. First of all, make sure you join the fucking Discord. Link in the description. Second of all, follow me on Instagram. I'm almost at 1K. Okay, can we get to 1K, please? Um, sec- third, thirdly, <laughs> starting tonight i'm gonna be going live almost every single night on youtube so make sure you turn on the notification bell you don't want to miss that we're gonna be playing some games we're gonna be smoking some weed it's gonna be a great fucking time love you guys so much okay that's it bye <laughs> oh my God. let me hit the pen type shit what that ass let me hit the pen type shit b bro what language are you speaking in new york <laughs> concrete jungle this story takes place a few years ago when my school was having an end of the year trip to New York. I'm not gonna lie y'all, I was hype as fuck for this trip. I put my fucking fit on my bed before I went to sleep the night before, like you know when you lay that shit out? I was ready bro. But anyway, the day finally came where we were gonna go to New York, and I was hype as fuck, so you know I packed all my clothes up, I got all my shit. Don't forget the Benjamin, always gotta bring the Benjamin. But anyway, it's 6am, early as fuck o'clock, and my mom drops me off at the school, and I interrupt with the boys you know I dab them up was good my guy and we get on the bus and we fucking take off to New York and hey it's about a three hour drive to New York from where the school was so shit if you don't think I'm going in the bathroom in the back of the bus and getting faded than a hoe you don't fucking know me so I do just that you know I get a little <coughs> oh. <sighs> And I slumped back down in my seat and I was knocked the fuck out. You already know I had the shitty Apple earbuds. Actually, nah, that's cap. I had some five below earbuds and I was listening to Damn by Kendrick Lamar. But eventually I arise from my eternal slumber. You see, everyone that went on this trip had to cough up some bread. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I had to save up about $300 to go on this fucking trip because my school was broke. We had to pay for our own hotel. But anyway, we get to the hotel, we go in, and we put our bags in the rooms. You see, I was in a room with my boy James, Carl, and Chris. And Timmy. Shit, I forgot. This is a long time ago, y'all. But anyway, we put our shit in our room, we get settled, and then the fucking dean comes over and says, Hey, we gotta get on the bus, we're going to Times Square! And I'm like, uh, <coughs> I'm about to blow a bag! So, you know, we all hit the hotel bathroom real quick, get a little, get a little sesh going. Fast forward, we're in Times Square, and we're all going in stores and shopping and shit. Now listen, I was never really into sports, alright? But all my friends were, so I was forced to go into these fucking stores and look at these jerseys and do all this shit. Now, I don't remember the exact name of the store, but it was a big sports store and it had a bunch of Boston Bruins shit, okay? And everyone is fucking cleaning up in this store. I mean, we got kids walking out with fucking two jerseys, fucking three jerseys. My guy had a fucking vest or some shit from the fucking Yankees. I don't fucking know, bro. But I'm feeling a little pressured, I'm not gonna lie. So inside my little teenage brain, the gears started turning. One thing leads to another, and I bought this fucking $200 Boston Bruins sweater. This left me with about $100 left for the next two days in fucking New York. I was fucked. But you know, time goes on, shit happens, whatever. So we're walking through Times Square. Keep in mind, this is like late 2017, early 2018. It is the height of the fidget spinner era. And these street vendors knew that shit. Yeah, we got fidget spinners. This made the whole class hyped as fuck. They get into a single file line and start purchasing hella fidget spinners. And shit. I don't want to be left out, so I get my ass in that line and I drop $30 on this fucking stupid little gold fidget spinner. Worst financial decision of my fucking life, because when we got back on the bus, everyone was trading fidget spinners, fucking around. Someone stole my shit, okay? And to make matters even worse, I took the fucking hoodie out of the bag and it still had the fucking ink tag on it. Like, you know the little white ink tag? You can't take that shit off without it fucking just completely ruining the hoodie. So I'm pissed off, bro. I'm 0-2 right now. So I go in the bathroom of the bus, I'm pissed off, I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna take a blinker. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, alright. <gasps> this one set me over the edge, I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I get back to my seat, and I'm fucking, dude, I'm like jello. But then the bus driver hits me with possibly the worst fucking announcement ever. <laughs> alright, how's it going, students? <coughs> Next stop, 
Top of the Rock. If y'all don't know what Top of the Rock is, it's basically a big ass skyscraper in New York and you get to go all the way up top and you can see the entire city. Sounds cool, right? Y yeah, not for me because I'm fucking deathly afraid of heights and I'm high than a bitch. But I can't be looking like a pussy in front of my whole class. I gotta do this shit. So there I am, high as fuck, Top of the Rock. We get there, you know, we get on the elevator, this shit brings us up, fuck dude, I don't even remember, it had to be like a hundred stories. We're in the elevator, my ears are popping, I am freaking the fuck out internally. <sighs> okay, what's this? this is, we get off the elevator, and it's, it's gonna be fine, I'm just gonna stand up there, I'm gonna get to see New York, it's gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> what the fuck? You see, once you get off the elevator, you're not at the top, you gotta climb a shit ton of stairs. And the walls around you are like fucking just straight glass, dude. It's just straight windows. So I'm tweaking, bro. I'm shaking and I'm walking up these stairs. But finally, we make it to the top. Yo, Split, you gotta come see this, man. We can see the whole city. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good right here. Like, guys, I caught one glimpse and I'm like, oh, cool. I'm straight. And I just sat on the fucking floor the whole time. But regardless, you know, I made it back down. I was okay. Uh, I... It was it was not a good experience. I'm not gonna lie, but we get back to the bus and we start heading back to the hotel And you know my high's kind of wearing off I'm, I'm coming down and I'm feeling pretty tired. I'm not gonna lie I'm thinking I'm about to go to the hotel and slump the fuck out boy was I fucking wrong cuz we get back to the hotel And my boys were feeling the complete opposite It was as if they drank three fucking Red Bulls because they were throwing shit they were all fucking around. I was sitting in the corner on a chair just fucking dying. And this shit goes on until the wee hours of the night. Guys, I literally just found... I literally just found my old Snapchat, and I have... I'm gonna just play this shit. As you can see, nobody was allowed to fucking sleep. And before you know it, it was day two. We stayed up the whole fucking night. I just... I couldn't sleep! But anyway, we wake up, we go down to the calf for some breakfast, it's- it's not good food, I'm gonna be honest. It's like little fucking, like, little cups of, like, Fruit Loops and, like, shitty milk. Like, it, it's- it's not that good. Not the best way to start a fucking day after an all-nighter, I'm gonna be honest. And we had a big fucking day ahead of us. We were going to Central Park, and then we were going to see Aladdin on Broadway. Two things that I was not really fucking hyped for, if I'm being honest. So, you know, we get back on the bus, I go to my favorite smoke sesh spot, I get a little high. You know, I'm off a fucking bender at this point. Like, I've been high for 24 hours, so it's it doesn't even feel like being high at this point, honestly. But anyway, we make it to Central Park, and then we gotta deal with this fucking absolute buffoon of a tour guide. Uh, hey, I'm glad you guys could make it. Welcome to Central Park, welcome to New York, how are you guys liking it? Yo, does this guy ever shut the fuck up? Alright, tough crowd! And we set off on this absolutely inebriated walk through Central- cent Fuck. Central Park. This is where it starts to get foggy because I've been up for fucking- What? What is it? Over 24 hours at this point. I've been high the entire time. My little fucking teenage body couldn't really handle that shit. So I, I, I honestly don't really remember much. I mean, like, we went to, like, some monument or something and then there was- it was like, it wasn't underground, but it was like this little area, like a museum kinda. Dude, I really don't remember this shit. But basically, I blink, I teleport, we're at Aladdin. I'm still high. Y'all, if y'all haven't stayed up for multiple days at a time, you probably don't know what I'm about to say, but... Basically, when you stay up so long, that like, your brain can't physically handle being awake. Like, you start dreaming, and it kinda gets mixed with reality. Like, you start... You basically start tripping. The best thing I could compare it to would be like when you go to the dentist and they give you that gas and you start just tweaking the fuck out. It kind of felt like that. And I'm gonna be honest, the 2017 shitty cart didn't really help. So I'm tweaking, like I'm falling asleep with my eyes open, I'm seeing shit, I'm fucked up. Next thing I know, we're in a fucking wax museum. And I'm looking at these wax figures and these, they're fucking pretty detailed, man. Like, I don't know if y'all have ever been to a wax museum, but... That shit is detailed as fuck. I'm staring at these things. I'm like, yo, what's good? Bro, that dead ass looks like Beyonce. Bro, it's not the real Beyonce. How do you know that she's not frozen in cryogenic sleep, bro? How do you know? You don't fucking know. You'll never know. But anyway, we make it out of the wax museum and we start heading back to the bus. Now, I'ma tell y'all, there was this girl, I'ma just say her real name, bro, Emily. And she had a fucked up leg, so she was in a wheelchair because she broke her shit like a week before the trip, but they just let her go. I don't fucking know why. And then there was a girl, her name was Scarlet, I think. 
Fuck, I don't even fucking care. Anyway, she was pushing her in the wheelchair, and she accidentally hit, like, this homeless guy. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hey! What? What the fuck are you doing I'm with sorry. that wheelchair? My guy was getting upset. I'm not gonna lie, the dean came over and straight bitched this homeless man. Like, yelled at him, guy got all upset, walked off in a fucking huff and puff. And we got back on the bus. Now, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, if I don't get some fucking sleep tonight, people are gonna die, bro. Like, I am tired as fuck. We get back to the hotel, I'm finally about to slump, I'm like, damn, I kinda just want something to drink. We look in the fridge, nothing. And we're on demon time at this point, we've been up for almost 48 hours, so we're like, we're gonna get a fucking drink if it's the last thing we do. Because honestly, we had no fucking money at this point, we already blew it on stupid shit. So we start planning the biggest heist of the century. Okay. Boys, so the snack cabinet is downstairs across from the receptionist. If one of you goes and distracts the receptionist, I can run in, I can get us a couple Gatorades, a couple Doritos, then run back up to the room. Nothing, no one will ever fucking know. So basically, we open the door, but we gotta do it carefully because the deans put tape on the door to see if we would, like, go out. I don't know, I guess to prevent people from fucking. I don't really understand that shit. Um, but anyway, we gotta open the door really slowly, make sure not to break the tape, and then we start going down. We hop in the glass elevator. Shit was cool, by the way, I'm not gonna lie. We go downstairs, and then there's the receptionist. So, you know, Timmy goes over, starts distracting the receptionist with some dumb shit. So... Uh, how long have you been working here? Oh, that's nice. Um, so wait, when, uh, if I have, so, do you have public restrooms? Huh? Oh, I got it, run! Somehow we made it back to the room unscathed, and we were set. We had, like, four Gatorades, we had some fucking Doritos, I even got myself some Sun Chips, bro. And we just start munching. And before you know it, it was morning, and it was time for us to get on the bus and go home. Honestly, none of us could fucking sleep. But we got on the bus, and we just sat there and looked out the window. I'm still high, you know, I was ripping the pen all night. I was feeling like a straight Lego minifigure, bro. Like, I was not having it. I was fucking miserable, and I was fiending for some more cars. So I'm thinking, hey, I'm about to go to the bathroom. When all of a sudden, this fucking kid Evan, bro. Fuck this kid. Bro stands up from his seat, goes... <laughs> Runs to the bathroom and starts fucking puking. Then flushes the fucking toilet. Now listen, we're on a bus, right? Like, they had some sort of chemical toilet. When you flush it, it smells like ass, dude. So it's stinking up the whole bus. Everyone's nauseous at this point. This shit fucking sucked. And Evan went back to his stupid little seat and fucking sat down. Not even 15 minutes later, bro got up and did the same thing. I think he fucking did it about like four times. And me personally, I just wanted to fucking go home at this point. But I think Evan backed up the septic system or something because we literally had to pull over at a gas station and we had to switch buses. So we get home extra fucking late. We make it back to the school. It's late as fuck PM. I'm feeling like shit. I've been up for three days. My mom picks me up. Hey, how was New York, honey? Uh, it was fucking... Fucking pretty cool. So, what'd you get? Oh, I got uh, uh, a fidget spinner, but someone stole it. And I got a hoodie, but the ink tag is on it. So, unfortunately, that was a pretty bad purchase. As if I didn't already know this, my mom started yelling at me like, You blew all your fucking money on a stupid hoodie and a fidget spinner. And I'm sitting there in quite possibly the nearest state I've ever been to death. And I'm just eating it, bro. I'm just taking it. I'm not even replying at this point. We get back to the house. I go upstairs. You already know I passed the fuck out. Baby, you got something in your nose. Sniffing that cake and you feel the hole. Hope you find peace for yourself. No boyfriend couldn't fill the void. 